Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, free Enterprise fans around the world. We have some amazing Eblin Elixir League Moonvale Mixer flags for you tonight here on RPG Limit Break. Big thank you to RPG Limit Break for partnering with us. My name is Possum Morpheus, and I am joined in the booth by the one and only Demarine 2. How are you doing this evening, Demi? I'm looking at Mr. JRPG's names and going, how do you deal with having 11 party members with the exact same name? It's killing me inside. Yeah, uh, well, a lot of kamikazes would certainly help with that. Um, would definitely be able to to deal with most of those party members. Um, but let's actually hope we don't use kamikazes for offense, because that's just uh, kind of a really arcane strat and would require a whole lot of apples to be useful. It certainly won't help with Rydia and her 30 HP. I mean, we do not start with Rydia and her 30 HP, though. We start with Sid and his 700 and something. 80? 90? I don't remember 88? the exact number. 42. That is the answer. But yes, we, we've got... Um, some people think that Sid is a fantastic a fantastic hero because he becomes a natural fantastic anchor later on. Uh, some people like him because, hey, he could equip bows and post up some damage early in the game. So, uh, we love Sid. Sid's great. And we're only going to get one Sid. I'm a big Sid fan because no matter what his super smith is, it's always excellent. It's either a uh, an Excal for him, which is the Thor's hammer, a Crystal Sword Light for either him, Kane, or Cecil in the Giant Axe, and a Crystal Sword Plus uh, for him, which is the Flare Hammer. So for me, I am a huge Sid fan as a hero, mainly because I like to see Sid hit things, and boy howdy, when he gets so super smart, he hits things. Yes, fair, he does hit things exceptionally hard, which is always nice. Uh, Man Possum, four runners I, I have not seen in a minute. Uh, what do we expect from these four? Great races. Uh, we have Fiery Blizzard versus Tibalt, and we have Mr. JRPG versus Soapbox Gamer. They are all representing different teams. Uh, Fiery Blizzard is on Coco Shop Quartet, currently four and one individually. Uh, so doing very, very well. His team, two and four. So, you know, a little bit less than, than probably they wanted, but really good, uh, you know, performance anyway. Tibalt, part of We Wear Short Shorts in Winter, one and three individually, one and five as a team. So a little underperforming from where they would want to be, I think. But what's not going to be underperforming is that starting package, that starting sparkle, and uh, your favorite character, Demi. Let's get a white mage in this group. Let's add a forum on with that box. So three characters to start if the runners want to check the third. Uh, loops in really neatly because obviously Mist Cave is in play with Golbez, uh, Pubble Gauntlet, and Mist Dragon all on the table for bosses you definitely want to find. Um, launching the Falcon, trading away the Rat Tail, and my favorite objective of them all, go into the giant and killing some big bosses. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping we don't find a cursed ring because Sid is super awkward without one. Even though you get a dwarf axe, if you take Sid up to the giant, it can be a little spooky to try to get through that element spot, which has 89 uh, agility. And we see Fiery Blizzard and Tibalt. Uh, looks like we are uh, going twin harping. Now, uh, this, this has to be or I'm hoping this is a throwback just to mess with me because Woo Bear and I did this in a race in ZZ5 uh, where we went to the Twin Harp, we full looted Cave Magnus uh, and then left just to mess with Kong. Now I am hoping these two are doing this to mess with me and possibly you as well. Who opens boxes in Cave Magnus? Right? <laughs> Cave Magnus, interestingly enough, is one of the places in the game that is the worst loot like distributions in the game uh, this was actually an intentional thing that was uh, was balanced into the game um, but in terms of runners doing actual things that need to be done Mr. <laughs> JRPG started with one of my favorite starts in this flag set is in Baron seeing that yes. there's an Edward there Soapbox Gamer knows he's going to need the hovercraft at some point today so he's going to launch the hovercraft to start us off and uh, probably this means watery pass is going to maybe get looted out yeah, I'm a big fan of the Baron uh, check immediately. Unless I have exactly Edge, then I'll just kind of YOLO the overworld, like give me any decent weapon and I'm good. Uh, but looks like uh, Fiery Blizzard and Tobalt may have agreed to to uh, to be fools today. Uh, and they have gone straight uh, <laughs> to to fight the Dark Elf. So a uh, little bit of 
uh, a show for everybody, you fools, and we do the start again. Uh, you'll love to see it. It's pretty funny. I applaud them for it. No saves either, so they're both going to wander through the opening cutscene again. Soapbox Gamer found one of the encounter boxes in the center the center chest here. Uh, got a sword shirt for his troubles for his forum, which is fantastic. Mr. JRPG gives us a look at the first boss. It's the four elements sitting around in Mist Cave. No one cares. She sets out. Back to it. <laughs> yeah, and Mr. JRPG, uh, currently two and two on his team, Iridia's Rebels, while he shows us a Yang at the package. Uh, looks like we're going to sit through this and pick up that Yang. Uh, and possibly peak the boss as well. Uh, so a nice early play from Mr. JRPG, going to provide some, uh, what I would expect is a different routing, some divergence uh, from Soapbox Gamer. But Mr. JRPG, two and two overall for individual record, four and two uh, as a team. Ridia's Rebels is part of an 11-way tie at four and two in our tournament. There are 24 total teams and somehow 11 of them have ended up at four and two. I'm not going to do the math on the probability of that because, uh, well, math on stream, I do happen to love it, but I can't actually do that math. I don't want to calculate those odds. Uh, and then Soapbox Gamer, part of Big Chocobo Storage Wars, currently 0-4, looking to get his first win. Has had some really good races, but come up just shy. His team overall 1-5, so a little under where they want to be as well. But I expect some really good matches uh, tonight between Fiery Blitters, Blizzard and Tybalt and Mr. JRPG and Soapbox Gamer. Absolutely. I just find it really intriguing that, you know, just watching runners as they perform against their teams and that we have 11 teams at four and two. Uh, we do have a position week in week eight. It's currently week seven. So, you know, we will be breaking. We will be breaking all half of those ties pretty much naturally just by letting four and two teams, um, which will possibly be some number of five and two teams, duel it out to get to six and two face to face, head to head, mano a mano, team to team, toe to toe, head to head, face to face. But that's next week. We're here right now. Uh, Mr. JRPG does take the package character. Fiery Blizzard is like, I don't like Yang. Yang is bad. Resets out. So we've got some opinions here on the Karate Man himself. And the Karate Man is guarded by a purple robe. So a Mylan brother. Yeah, I think that's interesting that if you're willing to peek the, the character, uh, like in, in Mr. JRPG's case here, I definitely like following through with this. Uh, while Yang is not great, until we know who else is around, like, Yang may be our best DPS just by the, the nature of gaining levels. Uh, like, if this is a hook route and someone like Tella shows up to go with a, you know, a Sid, a Porum, uh, you know, and stuff like that, and Edward maybe with no spoon, Yang could actually put in a lot of work and have elementals to hit. So I kind of like getting the Yang picked up for Mr. JRPG here. Uh, and very interested to see how that plays out versus our other runners who may not do that. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of interesting checks, Tybalt got paid off in the under the waterfall checks here in uh, in the. Uh... Ugh, sorry. <laughs> in the pass cave here, uh, ended up picking up an over ogre axe for our our fine gentleman grandfather Sid. Yeah, ogre axe is quite the upgrade. A dwarf axe is pretty good attack power. Pretty questionable accuracy, but the big problem is it reduces Sid's already paltry agility by five additional agility points. So instead of being at like eight or nine agility, Sid's at like four, which is actively bad for the overworld. That Ogre Axe, slap it on him, he doesn't use agility. It hits pretty hard. Sid's natural strength stat is through the roof. So that, uh, that Ogre Axe is going to be quite the hitting stick for Tybalt. Absolutely. Um, also has back row glitch from that dwarf axe as well, so Sid can hang out in back. Um, big thing here, so Box Gamer giving us our first look at a actual boss. It's Dark Elf sitting down at the bottom of Antlion Cave. Yeah, Sid just going to tear through these early bosses. Uh, love to see a Kane there as well. Kane and Sid is quite the early game combo, uh, especially with a Porum. Uh, as well. Yang makes a pretty nice nice tertiary Zerker here, so our party could ultimately be filled out with what you would consider like budget Berserkers, as Rosa is vanilla and Kaipo laying in the bed. Uh, you could end up with a team of like Sid, Kane, Porum, uh, Yang, and either Pal or Meridia, something to that effect. That's a good enough party for, for the end game. You just need to add levels. Yeah, and baby Bacchus wines, which are very available in our S standard shops. Uh, Soapbox Gamer is going to locate a a 
grayish stone as opposed to a ruby from the antlion nest here. So adamant rock is attained. Half of forge in hand. And on the way out of antlion cave, picks up that chest in the upper right and finds a mute knife. Uh, if an edge shows up, that is probably the best weapon he can get that's not named a Masa, a Mura, or a Ninja Sword. Uh, and in a lot of fights, is actively better than those. Mr. JRPG finding black belts for sale in Kaipo, plus five to the strength stat. Tons of physical evade. Really, really nice uh, pickup there in those black belts. Yeah, especially with Yang in your party, who has issues because his only scaling is from strength and levels. Um, so you can at least break half of the leveling curve. Every eight strength you get is another hit towards your total hit counter, uh, which is a multiplier to your damage. So adding five strength is basically like adding about five and a half levels to a character at this point. Um, you're never going to say no to that, that's for sure. Yeah, damage is everything with uh, with Yang, the, the strength being the sole provider, nearly the sole provider for that agility helping a little. Any bit of strength you can give Yang, it is all for the better. And late game, uh, when you get into the high 40s, low 50s, that Yang will be outperforming Sid and Kane. Uh, won't outperform high level edges or Cecils, but that's just due to the nature of how overtuned those characters are. So much is Yang being actively bad. Uh, it's just simply a matter of if you get if Yang had a crystal sword, he'd love to equip that too, but there's not one. Yeah, absolutely. So Tybalt just a hair behind Fiery Blizzard at this point in time, but they're both gonna go down into the Antlion Cave here. Fiery Blizzard on the way out with his uh, with his well gotten Adamant Rock. Uh, Soapbox Gamer has just tapped on Kane to this party. The reason he's a little bit uh, Ali at this point is because he did do the looting down in Eblin Castle. Which has been a very hit or miss play, again, with the tier 5, but, like, Sork Shirt uh, did locate, you know, other gear as well. Um, so, you know, again, it's it's a it's a risk play. Like, there's nothing there progress-wise, so it ends up being a little risky. Um, yeah, one of the, uh, the big changes that has finally taken Eblin off the table as a mandatory go here or suffer the consequences check is that while we do have T. Wildish on, which still probably makes those trap chests over to in Eblin, the regular loot in non-trapped boxes maxes out at Tier 5. So with T. Wildish max Tier 5, it acts as if it is what we call T. Standard, or Standard Treasure Settings, which is only up to Tier 5 items, but still gives you the potential benefits of trap chests. So it's a way to finally make it so that you see something different than everybody go Eblin every seed. <laughs> yep. Uh, speaking speaking of Fabul, though, um, Fiery Blizzard there first. Uh, Tibble checking the waterfall. This is uh, the Dark Imp spy in the by. Um, we, we saw a blue robe. It was a singular blue robe, which is Water Hag. So A, it's a free boss off the table. But B, if we see a loose blue robe anywhere else in the game, um, say, at uh, King or Queen of Land of Summon Monsters, uh, we're all going to know what that is. Uh, I'll be honest, if you're a runner here, you're happy this is only one blue robe, because with this party currently, you are not equipped to take on a gauntlet. It's going to take forever and then three extra years. So for our runner's sakes, even though that's a freebie out of the pool and you, you normally want your freebies elsewhere, a uh, gauntlet would just be so, so awful time-wise. So I think our runners are going to be overall happy about that. Uh, they're probably not going to be thrilled about getting a Luka key. However, we're yet to see someone who can cast Warp. So if we don't get anyone who casts Warp, we can always just do Dwarf Castle normally, not worry about the Warp glitch, and just dive Luka and be on our way. Yep. The other thing of note in this flag set is that uh, shopping still has play here because you do start with a pile of Rune Rings that you can convert into a pile of money. Um, in this case, as you can see, Tybalt is converting seven Rune Rings into 70 grand to grab a Ice Brand Saber for Kane. Uh, ice Elemental Weapon, pretty solid. Transfers to a Seasal if necessary, but uh, gives you a lot of play against, in particular, Rubicant in the Elements fights. <laughs> Yeah, the Elements fight in particular can be super scary at some places. Now, in this seed, it's in Mist Cave, so it's not going to be very scary at all. Uh, but if it were at, like, the Masamune Altar, CPU spot, something like that, it could be very scary. Uh, so I still like the Ice Brand pickup. It's the best thing we've seen 
for uh, for Kane thus far. And it, as you said, it transfers over to Cecil. Kane can get maybe you know a white spear or gunnier spear or something else. Cecil can use that ice brand for a little bit, maybe do some cover strats, and you know that of course is predicated on the fact that we ever find Cecil. Cecil and Fusoya are gated in this flag set, so they cannot just appear. Uh, at like your Mount Hobbs, your Baron Inn. They have to be behind key items of some sort. Package, Sand Ruby, Dark Crystal Earth, so etc. Uh, Demi, can you tell me how this Octomam keeps ending up on a mountain swimming in stone? Uh, the ability to defy gravity is part of the randomizer. Oh. Yeah, that yeah. works. I think the interesting thing on this flag set right now is just kind of seeing that, like, you've got Soapbox Gamer doing some shopping. Mr. RPG is a little bit behind. It looks like a little bit behind, but he's done a lot of shopping. Uh, Black Belt Gi is going a long way already, as you can see, for damage throughput uh, alongside weaponry. So, you know, like, a lot of the early game really does come down to when do I feel like I've got enough, uh, enough gas in the tank to just start crushing through bosses? Because uh, the heavens know I don't, I don't want to waste time searching for loot if I don't have to but you know what's the thing that someone's gonna find on this flag set that's going to overwhelm anything i can find like the ogre axe was nice but you know sid's got you know sid's got a hammer uh you know we found ice brands for sale right we know that gungner spears could be in boxes it's tier five um but we don't have a big magical hitter which kind of is you know predicating pushing us towards wanting to you know open more boxes and loot more things yeah, definitely. And one of the neat things about this flag set is it can be very feast or famine. Uh, it very much so tests all of your abilities as a runner, not just your ability to to leverage power overwhelming, but to take parties like this, where frankly, this is not a hot star. Uh, this is a bit of a rough one. Yes, we have an Odorak Sid. Yes, we have a cane with some stuff. Like a Mute Knife doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, Porum's got a power staff. We're kind of grasping a little bit here for damage, as you uh, you alluded to. So this is one of those seeds that's going to test our runners a little bit to get going. Uh, once they do, they'll be fine, but uh, it's it's going to be slow to start. Uh, welcome, though, free enterprise, folks. Uh, we uh, we are currently in the midst, about 15 minutes in, from our twin cast here: Fiery Blizzard versus Tibble, Mr. JRPG versus Soapbox Gamer. Uh, the big difference for our runners so far, uh, Mr. JRPG has done the package and taken the Yong from the package. Uh, Soapbox Gamers looted Eblin Castle. Uh, otherwise, Fiery Blizzard and Tibalt have taken about the same path through the seed, and uh, Fiery Blizzard about uh, a boss check ahead of Tibalt. Yeah, one of the more interesting things that will crop up here is we haven't seen Baron in yet. Uh, we don't know what our underground route is, and like... When you mention like the, the thing about this party with power is just that like weapons only do so much. And so the idea being that, yeah, like we do damage and this party's unlikely to die. Sid's already up at a thousand hit points for, for Fiery Blizzard, it looks like. Um, so like, it's not like this party's gonna die. It's just that everything you do is gonna be a kludge. It's just gonna be a slog. You're gonna get stuck in the mud and you'll get through things, but like, how do you, balance getting through efficiently, bringing party members back if they die, especially Porum, who you probably want to keep alive. So it ends up being really, really intriguing. Um, Sand Ruby, though, we can add on a second White Mage at this point in time, because, you know, double White Mage, triple Brawler is a is a heck of a power comp in the late game, but does need some time. Yeah, definitely uh, can help out late game, but again, does nothing for us right now. Uh, interestingly enough, Rosa is and the sand ruby not what you wanted to find like it's really cool to have them but like this tells us what baron in you know has edward there and probably our underground access or it's a sneaky demis to zot one i believe uh are, are our options at this point but that rose as you know again as great as she is long term does does actually and this pains me to say does less than pour them right doesn't have exit, doesn't know Berserk, doesn't know Blink, and takes a little longer to get those online. So th the Sand Ruby, to me, is a dead key item right now. Like, everyone's going to go get that Rosa, and rightfully so. But it doesn't improve our damage. It just makes us able to kind of sustain fights a little longer. So contributing a little more to what's going to be a slower start. Yeah, sustaining fights is really important. Like, I think that... 
you know, when you've got a comp like this, you have to accept the fact that uh, getting through a fight is better than failing. Like, yeah. even if it's not the perfect, cleanest looking fight, like the amount of looting that we've done, I've seen flame sabers out there, there's ice brands out there, Butte Knife is out there, like, it's not a Rune Axe, but you're going to deal with it, right? Uh, Ogre Axe, if you want to take the Mad Ogre's box in case it's a hook route, and you want to loot out um, Castle Eblin as well as the Underground route. Like, there's options that certainly abound for getting a Rosa up to speed. You know, Double White Mages is a fantastic mid-game comp for at least surviving a lot of the troublesome things in the game. So, Fiery Blizzard, unsurprisingly, is going to take his Sand Ruby to uh, uh, Rosa right now. Uh, add her to the party. Tybalt is now in the process of fighting the Officer Soldier, and Mr. JRPG, it looks like, is going to give us our first look at the Lunar Spark that is guarding Edward. Yay, Edward. Oh, no probe. Our runners are happy to see a no probe early. Uh, Ogopogo with Sea Hero on can be really nasty, especially because we haven't seen Curse Strings yet. So yes, we can knock down Sid's agility a, a little bit with a Dwarf Axe, but this is... Uh, this is a very rough boss later in the game. So as a runner, you're extremely happy to see this right now because it means it ain't anywhere else. Yeah, getting this off the table, always nice. Like, you know, another tough one out of the box. There's Fiery Blizzard picking up the Black Belt Geese from earlier. Berserk online for Mr. JRPG at this point in time. Oh uh, boy. Well, we said if we find a blue robe somewhere, we know what it's gonna be. Uh, we got crocodiles. Senator Crocodile? State your business. Uh, yeah. So, the issue again with this gauntlet, just like the issue would have been in Fabul, is uh, <laughs> we're going to be here for a hot second. Uh, this kind of stinks. We don't have AoE damage. No one's found an Earth Hammer. Even better, had they found an Earth Hammer, half of the enemies here float. Uh, we've now berserked a crocodile, 10 out of 10, Mr. JRPG, as someone, uh, you know, myself, who berserks all sorts of things accidentally and then dies to them. Uh, I will always approve of an accidental zerking of an enemy. You know what we do have, though, that's actually really useful for this? We have an Ice Brand Sword and a Ice Claw on Yang. Um, alligators, crocodiles, and Electfish are all weak to Ice Elemental attacks. Uh, as we saw earlier, where... Uh, where Senator Crocodile got tagged for 850 from Yang and eliminated instantly. So, you know, there'll be no there'll be no discourse on the floor of this house here. Yeah, it is interesting also. Uh, who will use J items in this fight if anyone has them left? Because uh, we haven't found things like a Blizzard Spear. Blizzard Spear for Kane would be able to actually cast uh, a small ice spell. Uh, looks like Xenocat stating that Tybalt does have a Blizzard Spear, so actually Tybalt will have an advantage in this fight over the rest of our runners. Uh, the others, I don't believe, have that. So any AoE that you can go ahead and get off in this fight is huge from uh, our runners. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how quickly everyone gets through this, or not quickly, because uh, this is going to take a hot second, so I hope you all enjoy the... The fang shells, the alligators, the elect fish, the flying fish, and the aqua worms, because you are going to see a lot of them, my friends. Aqua worms, no wave. The same thing that Kainazo does, by the way. But since it's proportional <laughs> to the amount of health that the unit has, uh, aqua worms, thankfully, don't have possibly 63,000 hit points. Uh, petition to put an aqua worm at the package check for fun just make you fight aqua worms as the boss at uh, <laughs> on the giant that would be terrifying <laughs> this aqua worms every every fight opening with like a 2800 damage wave and just laughing at you yeah, it seems fair i think i think that'd be great actually yeah that sounds like something we should propose in uh, meme back and ideas because that's not feedback that's that's purely memes i do like the blizzard usage from fiery blizzard uh, unfortunately didn't kill the fang shells, but was able to get rid of the alligators and the crocodiles. And the important part there is those alligators, crocodiles, etc., they cheat. Uh, basically, they act as Evil Wall does or as a Berserker does in your party. Uh, they also do chaining attacks, so you can't interrupt them. And they pretty much are super fast and annoying. Get a bunch of attacks off. The quicker you can get rid of the crocodiles, the faster the fights will go. Yeah, I think the, the other big thing overall is just that right now for our runners, uh, only Mr. JRPG has avoided going up the mountain at this point in time. He's issued the uh, 
the ordeals check, which we know is just a just a sand ruby, which is not actually useful. Uh, and he's going to be incentivized to not check it even more with one of the two required bosses off of the table at this point. So I find that to be really interesting is that Mr. JRPG may actually sneak a little bit of advantage over Soapbox Gamer just based upon routing choices. Maybe. <laughs> if this isn't our underground access, he's going to ordeals and everyone else is going to Zot 1. So, or, or you know, whatever key item comes from that. Uh, it's, it's interesting. This is not guaranteed to be our underground access. Uh, it's very likely to be, but it is not guaranteed. Yeah, I suspect that it's just the idea here being that, um, you know, if you're if you're committed to dodging the ordeals check, right? You're committed to saying, you know, I don't need these three bosses for a potential later foo. I'm gonna gamble that even with a lightsaber in my back pocket, that uh, that our boy Cecil is gonna take the night off and be at like the back of the giant where I don't care anymore. And surprisingly, that has happened a lot. Actually, uh, Cecil has been on a giant a number of times. But such is the nature of gating characters. Uh, when Fu and Cecil are the only two gating, you know, gated characters being restricted, you know, you're going to end up in situations where they just don't want to show up. Uh, but we do get a hook. I am all for this. Yes, we get another character check out of this, but I'm excited to see our runners conquer a hook route with this squad because uh, there's still some nasties out there, Demi. <laughs> Yeah, there's some fun ones out there. We did talk about Kainazo, who can be an absolute monster in the second spot. Uh, Rubicant in the first spot is pretty devastating. Um, there's a, the first spot's only got about 6,000 hit points, but there are some bosses that show up in that first spot and make you just make you just want to turn tail and run. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, getting three three attacks a turn is pretty good, um, so we, we don't really love that either. The thing is, we'll see, Mr. JRPG has the interesting decision because Ordeals is still on the table for him, but off the table for everybody else. Um, if you're committed to the bit here, you're headed over and grabbing your hovercraft and heading under, we'll see what he does. Looks like he is heading to Troya. Uh, might be doing some shopping pre-hook. Fiery Blizzard on his way to go dive the hook as he doesn't have anything but uh, is that one left to check on the overworld. Uh, we'll see what the boss is down here first from Fiery Blizzard. Uh, Tybalt hot on his heels about to finish up Baron in. The Soapbox Gamer on fight two out of five, but has some J items he is not afraid to use. Uh, gets through that second fight very rapidly. We get another free hourglass. I believe that's the second one that we've picked up. I, I don't remember exactly where the first one was, but any free hourglass is a good hourglass when you're facing a hook route because we may need levels to get through whatever's down. Yeah, I think there was one that everybody grabbed in Antlion, and I saw one in uh, I saw one in Watery. Um, it looks like we've got coffins, though, so um, if we want to grind, we can convert money to experience points at a high and efficient rate here. Um, it's just a matter of how much how much cash you want to cash out. It looks like the answer for Fiery Blizzard is enough to get five coffins. So, twenty k, easy easy money, I guess. Just throwing it away. Ooh, heroin rogue for sale, cat claws for sale, poison axe for sale. That's a lot of good stuff there. Those cat claws will not be of any benefit except for Mister JRPG, as nobody else bothered to take the yong. Uh, but that poison axe that could help out quite a bit with the sid. For anyone who hasn't found a better option, I know Tibalt got that Ogre Axe, but I think for everyone else, that Poison Axe will do some work here. It also hits the Staleman and the Mad Ogres for bonus damage. So a pretty big pickup if we're planning on Trap. But looks like Fiery Blizzard not interested in doing any traps. While well, Mr. JRPG has said, bring it me the Eblin Trap Chest right now before even looking for the coffins on the hook right we're seeing what the extra character is here. It might be somebody that, because if it's Palum, you want the experience, right? If it's or this guy, guy. It, this guy, where Fiery Blizzard just sold a light spear to get, or a lightsaber to get his hands on a poison axe, um, I guess he's gonna be looking at Ogre Axe Cecil for a hot minute here. But uh, how do you feel? How do you feel about getting adding a pallet into this party? Uh, it doesn't help if you sell the lightsaber. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think real talk. I'm going back and buying a stack of coffins and I'm doing every trap, trap chest I can. Ebling Castle, Staleman, the Mad Ogres. I am just doing everything to find a stick for the god. And I, I will personally turn it into one of those seeds. 
where it just becomes let Cecil hit things. I think it's a perfectly viable way to play, and oftentimes is the fastest way through any given seed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love that plan as well. Um, obviously, Cecil is is game warping to a degree, so you know, um, just the equipment that he can equip is the big thing. And yeah, Fire Blizzard is now. He's just like, <laughs> I love you in counter boxes. Where are you? Please come to me. I want to fight the scale then. <laughs> Yeah, and worth noting that the the boss is completely free. It's two guards. We've already seen the Kaipo guards, so we know that this is going to be the uh, the Baron guards. We have coffins. The hook grab is free, you know, barring what's at the first spot. But likely, you know, there's not going to be much that stands on our way. So, like, you could dive underground and do what you want and get everything. Stalemen only leaving a moon veil. Uh, probably not what Tybalt wanted to see, but... You know, our runners are very incentivized with this Cecil to go off the beaten path. Now, if none of these boxes have value and somebody does just kind of gun it underground, that person gets a huge advantage. So boxes are still a gamble, even with a Cecil. Uh, big defense sword pick here, uh, Mr. JRPG gets the, the three Mad Ogre chests and adds on a very nice item. I like the Moon Veil. The Moon Veil potentially bails me out of a bad first boss um, that's a melee happy first boss in the underground route. As long as I can get it to fire, I'll win the fight. Uh, sure. So there's situations where it's going to be good. Yeah, Moon Veil could also help if we see something in the Fame Arch, such as, I don't know, uh, an evil wall and we want to play with it uh if we see something on the giant and we want to play with it earlier than normal having cecil and having a moon veil means you can just cover everyone forever you can actually even save scum it so if you go and take a fight and zerk someone else up use that moon veil on cecil it gives you nothing you reset you go next door to whatever the next check is and do it again basically repeating the usage usage of a moon veil the same way you can try to get extra value out of edge starting a spoon so i'm curious to see if anybody goes for that sort of strategy uh it would certainly be viable but it is uh something that you know isn't done very often with moon veil yep we got the black hat lamia check here for mr jrpg i don't know if it's not pasting this fight hard enough at this point this is where one of the pro this is one of the problematic fights if you don't have the juice yet because um any any of any damage effect is countered by black cats to bluster which can either apply paralyze or instant kill um neither of which are great obviously instant killing might actually be better because life potions are in good supply here but it's just real interesting. Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt did exactly what you said. They've decided to be that guy. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, I got a Cecil. It's time. I got to get, I got to get a weapon. But it is also worth noting, I have played a lot of Free Enterprise with Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt. Uh, we do a lot of pickup races and just racing uh, privately through Discord. So it is of no surprise to me they are doing exactly what I would do. Because <laughs> we all play a very similar game. So... Uh, not a surprise whatsoever. I will say with regard to uh, the Black Cat Lamia chest, uh, this just in, cats are jerks. Uh, we love them, but they're still jerks, uh, you know, even though they can be our best friends. Mr. JRPG does barely squeak out a victory here uh, and is rewarded with a Masa Mune. Uh, we don't have an edge, so that ain't going to do it. But Mr. JRPG probably going to leave, maybe use some life pots, a tent, heal up. Uh, and figure out what he wants to do, because that was a little close for comfort there. So the interesting thing here is if you don't find anything here, does how much nervousness does this add to the old the old, the old nerves meter in a race, right? You open the three boxes, you doubled back to Eblin Castle because you absolutely couldn't leave it behind at this point, right? Lightsaber is just not good enough for you because you're greedy and you want power. <laughs> What happens if you get nothing here, right? You get a Masamune, you get a Defense Sword, which is nice, but it doesn't break the game wide open, right? And you get nothing else. How do you feel? I, again, I think with Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt, they feel fine. Because again, I think they play enough together that they know each other's tendencies. They know both of them are doing. Mr. JRPG and Soapbox Gamer, I don't know what their knowledge is of each other. That's where I might expect a little more panic, a little more nervousness. 
Uh, and this is just a matter of runners being knowledgeable about each other. And one of the really cool things about having different races happening at the same time is we get a lot of different you know, views on how people would do things, what they're doing, how they're thinking. And you can even tell from the way that people are moving and menuing if they're nervous, if they're panicked. Uh, but we see Soap, oh, doing the fake out. I thought Soapbox Gamer was about to dive down there uh, without doing the boxes. Uh, but Mr. JRPG uh, looks to be playing pretty conservatively, actually, clearing all of this even before getting the Cecil, just saying, I don't want to make that second trip down. Also, you know, taking the risk inherently at the same time, though, of what if there's a foo? You know, a foo on a hook route, that would make these boxes a lot easier. A foo on a hook route where you didn't do ordeals even, so you may be, like, you may be ahead of your opponent at the moment, but their foo might have nuke where yours doesn't. Right. But thankfully, that's not the case, you know, but again, again, like we said, like, Let's see what Soapbox Gamer does. He is the last runner, and it looks like he's going to eschew the run out. He has decided that it's time to go forward, not backwards, progressing ever onward into Upper Babel. Yeah, and going to go after the format ogre chest, I'm guessing. Did the stalemate, take the format ogre, realizing it's a free boss. I can get underground. Maybe there's a freebie in the Fey March. Maybe, you know, the warrior chest has something. Maybe dwarf has something. Maybe Sheila One just gives me a crystal sword. You know, you just, you don't know. Um, and so Soapbox Gamer may just be saying, I have other things I can do. Uh, however, Soapbox Gamer is going to be in a little bit of trouble if he doesn't find a holy sword here because the Stamman Skull Chest has an X scout. It's not a crystal sword, but it's a darn good hit and stick for the guy. It'll do. It'll do in a pinch. Uh, we'll count on getting a crystal sword later. Um, the big thing here, of course, is that Mr. JRPG does have one specific problem in that he did not yet do ordeals. So, you know, he's going to see Cecil wearing black armor and black pants still in his emo phase and just go, man, this isn't, this isn't cool at all. I wonder if he exits out <laughs> and goes and does ordeals or just goes underground and uh, then immediately heads back to ordeals, picks Cecil I, back up. I think with the, with the freebie boss, the way it is, and the amount of experience that's still out there for our runners, I suspect that, like... The most optimal play would be ignore your Cecil for now, right? Go ahead and go underground, knowing that you can cash out this hourglass that you're going to locate here um, into a free boss and not worry about it, and then, you know, keep on fighting. Yeah. Um, I think I really like that play um, overall, just because it's just going to make life a lot easier. Also, if you found it, Mute Bell and bought it, you've got that option as well for the guards, although they will... They will hit you. That spot doesn't hit too hard, so you know, options certainly about. Yeah, definitely lots of options for our runners, but looks like we're getting some convergence here on the hook route, which is certainly expected. There's just a limited number of places to go, unless there's like again a Demis is not one that has something ridiculous. Our runners are always going to be going down this hook route. Uh, Excal in hand for three of our four runners, uh, only. Two of them, uh, Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt, have a Cecil online with an Excal. Uh, Soapbox Gamer getting through this mad over chest and gets some Artemis arrows. Really nice arrows, but not a Holy Sword. Uh, so I think we do have Heroin Robes, though. So Heroin Robe, Artemis Arrow, Archer Bow, Elven Bow, Samurai Bow, whatever Bow Rosa has. That's probably Soapbox Gamer's best DPS at the moment, which is not a bad place to be, frankly. Yeah, Catclaw Yang is actually looking pretty good right now, and that's that's frightening at, like, level 25. <laughs> um, but yeah, but Soapbox Gamer is going to head on down first with Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt kind of in near lockstep at this point in time. Uh, both seem interested in the Mad Ogre chest, which Blizzard's going to hit up first. Uh, Mr. JRPG, of course, is on his way down and is going to see a paladin and, you know, is going to probably get seduced by the power of the Holy Man. Um, which is understandable. <laughs> and our boss, our first boss, of course, is going to be Lord Odin. Yeah, so this is a spooky one, actually. Um, but I think Lit Arrow Rosa, uh, we might want her in the back row. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Lit Arrow Rosa would do work there. But yeah, we, we need her alive for this. Uh, uh, yeah. Odin, Odin go new me. Um, the zoomies are real and Odin just guts this party. 
Uh, that's a lot of melees for like 700. And then he just dantets the party and the fight's over. So you would, you don't have much time. You don't have much money. You don't have much to do here. This is be fun. This will be a treat for everybody to kind of see how do you handle this particular fight. Yeah, I want a Dwarf Axe on this Sid, and I want Rosa in the back row, and I want to be casting Berserk on her right away. That's what I would want to do with this fight. Let Archer Bow, Lit Arrow, uh, Hero and Robe Rosa do the damage, but let her get that action very quickly. Uh, I still just, I would want her in the back row so she doesn't die in one hit. This spot is so punchy. Yeah, two silk webs were located in boxes as well, and it looks like one is about to get cashed out here. Um, this is no surprise to me because you know, soapbox gamer, you gotta gotta slow down a little bit to get a bit of time. Yeah, uh, Porum deciding that uh, she's going to to take one for the team there. Rosa only doing just under a thousand, not great damage wise. So we may need a little help here. I would be very inclined to to just yolo that grimoire and just see what pops out of it, because uh, we might need a smidge of help here. Yeah, especially because when you're Zerked, you don't have the, the perfect accuracy, and bows are not known for their accuracy. No. So your damage is inconsistent, but just enough, just just barely grazing through there. So one boss down, and, you know, again, clutching it out a little bit here, and we'll see if he decides to just run right in, or if there's a safety save in his future. Uh, it's time to double check what items do I have, who am I, where am I, what am I doing? I like the YOLO, we have coffins. We know it's only two uh, two enemies. Uh, if Rosa's got a rune ring on, she literally can't die with a rune ring parallel rope. So this fight's over, it's just a matter of, you know, do we life glitch? Uh, we, we life glitch. We, we life glitch in. <laughs> which I love. Uh, <laughs> that extra XP goes a long way. We haven't found sirens, there's no guarantee of them. Uh, we only found coffins and leviathan orb. Uh, hanging out here in uh, in the hook route. So I definitely like this option. Uh, Fiery Blizzard just making mincemeat of that Odin. Uh, probably also going to just rush on into these guards. While Soap is going to be the first runner underground, uh, going to be just a little bit ahead of, uh, of Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt, but is going to be down in Excal, only rocking a lightsaber. But uh, Soapbox Gamer is against Mr. JRPG, not Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt. So Soapbox has a little bit of an advantage here over Mr. JRPG, who did reset out. Uh, so he is going to go, or excuse me, not reset out, exit out. He's going to go to Ordeals, I believe, uh, and then get his Cecil online and, and kind of do Excal things with that Cecil. Yeah, Cecil is absolute fire in this fight, though, swinging away for like 1300 with the Excal. So Tibbles through the Odin side of it. Fire Blizzard's cashed out two coffins and a life potion. We'll see you later, Guardsman. Uh, Fire Blizzard going to get underground about a minute behind Soapbox Gamer and about a minute ahead of Tibbles, roughly here. Um, Mr. JRPG has gone back above ground, um, is in currently in Agart, uh, doing some shopping and is likely to be taking a right right here because obviously you've got a Cecil, you've got a Holy Sword, um, your man needs to be holy, etc, etc. So I would not be surprised to see him continuing on and then stopping at the mountain. Yeah, I think he's also checking every shop on the overworld to try to find a cursed ring uh, and maybe some other items as well. Uh, being very thorough with his shopping where we've seen a lot less of it from our other runners. Uh, Soapbox Gamer did also show us at, at the top of tower, and Fiery Blizzard has as well, uh, Golbez is at the top of the tower. Uh, now I will say, the top of the tower is a really awful spot for Golbez, because it has a lot of health, like 20-something thousand health. And Golbez doesn't do any damage there, does like piddly amounts, and sometimes even with spells. So you're not going to get a lot of health. Uh, from Golbez. It's going to be resource intensive, and you don't start with a ton of Star Veils either. So it's one of those situations where, yes, it's cool to see that objective boss, but how cool really is it? Because this fight stinks. So you've got, you know how you mentioned just shoving through fights using the power of white mages and, and patience? Um, your Cecil's got a holy sword. Um, Zerk your boy, make him angry, and cast some Cure Twos. You're going to deal with it. Um, it's gonna be fine. You're gonna chug through it. Life is life is good. The spot doesn't do enough damage to actually be scary at all. Speaking of not doing enough damage, uh, Porum coming up about 80 HP, excuse me, Rosa, about 80 HP shy. 
of one-shotting the alert on Fiery Blizzard's side, so... Hey, 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 you know all those boxes we did? You know how, you know how Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt decided to go back and be that guy and go back and try and farm a weapon for Cecil, and they got an Excalibur, and we were all really excited. We are like, hey, it's Excalibur, it's a cool sword, we love it! Completely wasted time! Throw it yeah. away! <laughs> Crystal swords for everybody! Communism is great, I guess, I don't know. I'll see what the Senator Crocodile has to say about that. However... Uh, that crystal sword, yeah, that is an equalizer, and we did kind of talk about that a little bit. That like, what if Sheila One just happens to have, you know, the goods? In this case, it was a lot faster even than Sheila One. Now, I will say that's a ruby at the uh, the Leviathan spot. That's a hard pass from me. The I believe it was Doctor Lude at the Asura spot is doable. Going to be slow. We see sirens in the Fey March as well. So this Fey March gives us sirens and a crystal sword. Uh, yeah, that's a Fey March that's pretty good. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Uh, would Fey March <laughs> again. Um, yeah, no, like, obviously a Crystal Sword is quite the fine 200 attack power, 15 strength, 15, uh, 15 willpower. It's, um, as weapons go, it's absolute fire. It's going to destroy your problems in glorious and single combat, you know, excepting there's five of you. Um... Fire Blizzard, not interested in the Fey March yet, knows that knows that Golbez is at the top of the mountain here, or at the top of the tower in this case, just beelines it. Uh, Tybalt instead is going to get a Crystal Sword. Uh, Soapbox Gamer also gets a Crystal Sword. Um, and has decided it's time to go and fight uh, the good doctor here. And Mr. JRPG had to double back because, you know, can't pass up uh, can't pass up Excalibur Cecil. Yeah, I, I do think that with the free boss uh, hanging out there, would have liked to go underground, maybe peek the Fey March, get the Crystal Sword. Um, you know, do Sheila 1 and then head to Ordeals, just as a slight optimization. But I also don't hate getting the Cecil online before the hook 1 boss, because it will expedite that fight, and it could be very scary. So, uh, on Mr. JRPG's side, completely understandable to back out. Uh, unfortunate for him that the decisions he has made so far in this seed feel a lot like the decisions I've made recently on this flag set, where it's like, well, this would have been great in 9 out of 10 seeds. Sadly, we picked the one. It ain't going to work for That's the tough thing about randomizers, of course. Sometimes you just guess wrong, and that's hard, right? Like, sometimes you make the decision, right? Like, the correct decision in this seat, of course, is seeing Cecil. Now, 12, 13, 15 minutes later, we know the answer was ignore it, right? Yeah. The answer was just play with what you've got, and you'll get rewarded for just shoving ahead. However, you know... Crystal Sword's a good weapon, right? And you know it's only an encounter chest, and you want to double back, and you want to gamble a little bit, and, you know, that's kind of how it goes. So we do have Tybalt and Soapbox Gamer, though, looking at Dr. Cutscene here, and they're working their way through. Yeah, not too scary. The second form of this is actually completely free. Uh, if you're ever in trouble on the second form of Dr. Luggage, uh, you can go ahead and put up a Star Bell. That reflects the beams. It basically fizzles the lasers, and it reflects the emissions. So that laser that just did uh, 1,600 damage also tells us that Dr. Luge there has about 6,400 health left. It's usually about 25% of his HP. Uh, the emissions don't do much at all, but this fight is going to be well in hand. Uh, Cecil just needs to get a few swings in, uh, get the Berserk going since he has been healed, and this fight will be over pretty shortly on Soapbox's side. Uh, Tibbal going to be joining him soon, and Fiery Blizzard gets the script from Golbez. Golbez asking the question, the question being why, and the answer being because Golbez, you're a jerk. Opinions of this commentary team are not the opinions of Golbez, 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 and Golbez Esquire. Uh, all legal, all legal obligations will be met by this team. Anything we say is not binding. Void were prohibited. Uh, enjoy your darkness, Crystal. Uh, yeah, just do your objectives, I guess, or something. Yeah, just do your objectives. Game is easy. Um, that does give us access to the Giant of Babel, um, and the oh. checks. <laughs> okay. So, Fey March, let's recap. Sirens, Crystal Sword, Adam, and Armor. <laughs> um... <laughs> what's, yeah, a, what's above 10 out of 10, Demi? I, I... Is this like is this this is just pure fire, isn't it? It's just <laughs> ah, do you wish to have do you wish to have all of the things? You never need to open another treasure chest. You never need to you never need to go into another shop. Um just just go finish. Go kill everything. Yeah, I mean I would want Bacchus, 
but yeah, I, I, there, there's no need for literally anything else. You just need Bacchus now. Game is Tri over. Triple bruiser, <laughs> double white mage. Guess what you don't need with this composition? Yeah, it's actually, but I, it's it's I, more it's more efficient to actually get Bacchus wines. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just want my first turn every fight to be Cecil get drunk. I do like Tibalt's decision here. Uh, now bearing the crystal sword, adamant armor, Cecil to just take on the ruby. Uh, adamant armor is going to reduce the glare to one. It's going to reduce all the fire damage to one. Back row adamant armor is going to reduce the physical hits to one. So this fight is free. It'll take a little bit of time. Cecil's going to be the only one to live. Okay, I guess we're using ice brand instead. That makes sense. Uh, but either way, uh, this fight is done and dusted. So yeah, Tibalt gonna take this one out, and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, drilling down with the uh, drilling down with the or with the ice brand sword just gonna make this more efficient as well. Uh, Crystal sword's great and all, but it does you know probably about thirty five hundred a swing here, which is just generally great. Um, but yeah, as you, as you said, elemental weaknesses are very important in this game because they are usually quad damage, not like double damage. So. Like, even simple things like we were seeing earlier with Ice Claws on Crocodiles can, you know, drill eight, nine thousand damage out of a gang at early levels. And looks like Ruby is gone. No script. Tibal going to be the first to show us uh, what's going to pop out of the remaining spot in the Fey March. Uh, we've hit nothing but diamonds so far. Uh, and a glass hat. We finally came up a little empty, so no punishment for Soapbox. For, uh, for yeeting himself out of the Fey March, skipping that ruby. Uh, can definitely see it either way. The completionist in me loves Tibalt's play of taking that, but Soap also knows that there is a Golbez at the top of the tower, and you know he wants to go after it. Crystal Sword in hand, Adamant Armor in hand. Uh, this Cecil is just going to chew this Golbez to bits. Men will die, and by men we mean Golbezes, and you know that's just unfortunate for everybody watching, I guess. Um, but yeah... Um, cleaning up cleaning up uh, Rubicant that fast, though, right? You have to think that if your opponent does it, you have to think you did it faster, right? Like, like, I think that's the thing is it's not just, you know, did my opponent do this? It's just, you know, did my opponent loot the things that I would loot to have the skill and the, or the, not the skill, but the, the juice that I have to, you know, drill through this fight, to just take this boss out in eight swings or six swings, or in this case, it was five, right? Um... If you think that five swings is the fastest you're going to get through that fight, you don't care. You, you, it's, it's experience points. Yeah, and it, it's also one of those things like, you, you just can't do that fight faster. Uh, you're basically having a perfect combat at that point. And uh, you know, I was given some free enterprise words of, of advice from one of the all-time greats a couple years back, and it was, do not think you're playing against perfection. We're all human unless you're playing Dusty Griff. Now we can add <laughs> some names to that list with Dusty, but this was Inven who said that. Uh, Inven, an amazing free enterprise racer, amazing human, uh, this, you know, gave me that information, said, don't think you're playing perfection. If you're playing really well, believe in your own game, believe you're ahead, stop playing like you're, front, you know, like you're playing behind. None of our, our racers on the top, Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt in particular, should feel like they're behind. They've blo both played very well to this point, made excellent decisions and had very quick fights. So in their cases, you know, I, I tend to agree with you there that they shouldn't feel like those fights took a long time. They shouldn't feel like it was a wrong choice, uh, that they should feel very comfortable with where they're at right now. Uh, in the booth, we do happen to know Tybalt is up in Adamant Armor though, because Fiery Blizzard did opt out uh, of that uh, that Asura spot, Dr. Lugan. So there is an Adamant up for Tybalt, which will be a bonus for him. Uh, he's also checking the sealed cave right now, uh, Tybalt is, to make sure this item is not required, but a rat tail, he's going to have to walk that out because that is objective number six. Uh, so Tybalt going to be giving us a peek at what our boss is down here. And if this is required, uh, or if this is like a D-Mist, for example, since that's the only one left, it could be a huge advantage. Yeah, the big thing now with with two bosses off the table, objectives one and two have been located and completed by some runners. Uh, we still don't have a harp, 
We still don't have a Legend Sword for three or four, but five, six, and seven have all been located. Falcon has launched because he had to get underground. Mr. JRPG is in the process of finishing that up right now with the Crystal Sword Cecil and some Zerking. Um, trading away the Rat Tail, of course, we've got the hook to get underground, so the Rat Tail's been located, and we do have the Darkness Crystal, so we can go to the Giant of Babel. So we are one key item away from no mode at this point in time. Uh, Fiery Blizzard, of course, has decided it's time to go to the other half of the coin, though, and is going to go ahead and launch the Big Whale. <laughs> Yeah, and launching the big whale, uh, he's probably looking for a warp caster because we have all these wonderful party members. None of them can take advantage of that warp glitch. So Tibbal's just going through and saying, I'm going to do the sealed cave check now and then I'll go do dwarf. Uh, personally, I would like to see it done the other way around because dwarf could have a warp caster. Uh, and, you know, if Rydia shows up there, she gets a, a slingshot immediately, which would put her well into warp range. Tele could show up, Fu could show up. There's actually three options that could show up at Dwarf Castle to get you on your way to Warp Glitch right away. So would like to see the order flip a little bit on this check for Tibalt, but certainly defensible because it just routes in as he was flying away from uh, his other check. Yeah, and, you know, of course, you've got Crystal Sword Cecil, so everything is well, pretty, yeah. <laughs> pretty, everything is pretty, uh, pretty well in hand here. You know, like I said, if you... Like, if Fiery Blizzard finds a warp caster here, like, if, if Foo, Vanilla Foo pops up, like, obviously, this is going to be a... This is going to end up being a an interesting way to save time, potentially. But, like, if you had to come up to the moon and do all of this and get the character first, and so we don't know, this could be Duplicate Edward, and that would be terrible. It could be, or it could uh, it could be that Foo you talked about, Demi. Yeah, I should have gone with my gut. Knew it was yeah. going to be Foo, 100%. <laughs> Uh, the interesting thing about Fusoya, though, and this is going to sound a bit weird, we are basically at the end game for our runner. I don't actually think I would take Fu here. Um, Fusoya has awful stack growth. We're about to be grinding. We're going to be putting all of our chips in the Crystal Sword Cecil basket anyway. Um, any bit of grinding we do is going to be Sirens or the Moon. Yes, Fu might help a little bit with nukes and maybe a quake, but I think going after just a warp glitch caster, I think it's kind of missing the plot a little bit because there's so much you can do without it um, that makes your team better in the long run. On the other hand, Fu is absolutely fire. And, you know, if you've got a trash AOE bosses, he's great. Um, you know, he supplants your need to, you know, yes, you're going to grind up, but, you know, maybe you just, you want to go with the base 1900, 1900 health and just be done with it at that point in time. It's, it's, it's generally speaking, it's good enough, but there's Bacchus Wines. It doesn't, like, I think, I think that the flight may not pay off, but, you know. For the Bacchus, it does. For the wine, the wine is the big deal. Yeah. The, the wine is worth more than the foo in this case. Which is weird to say, but I think it's I think it's correct in this case. I mean, you would also know at this point in time if you were wineless as well, and of course if there were no Bacchus wines, then foo is just absolutely a monster there. Um, but who can say? Um, but we'll see at the end. Like, that's where that's where all of these decisions will kind of come together, because these runners have all been so very divergent at this point in time. Yes. Right, Tybalt's got an adamant armor that Fiery Blizzard does in Soapbox Gamers in Dwarf Castle, while Mr. JRPG is uh, catching up a little bit in Fae March and can attack on the Crystal Sword. Uh, Edge, Masamune Edge, was the yes. character of choice here. <laughs> um, does Kane go to the bench? Do you just send home Edge? Like, options certainly abound. You've got the brawlers that you want, though, right? Sid, your anchor, two brawlers of choice, be it Cecil Kane or Cecil Edge, um, or I guess in Fire or in uh, Mr. JRPG's uh, grouping, it'll probably be uh, Yang and Cecil. But we'll see. We'll see how this all plays out. Yeah, I mean, there's a world where we also end up just quad zerking with a poor uh, as as our white mage uh, or a Rosa as our white mage. Um, you know, just Sid, Edge, Kane or Yang, uh, and then add the, the Cecil in there. I can certainly see a world where we do that. Uh, looks like Fiery Blizzard can give us a peek at the hairdryer chest. 
uh, not getting that adamant armor maybe making a, a play just a, a glass hat so we now know that there's glass hats in the fame arch uh, and on the moon courtesy of the hair dryer so probably not the value that fiery blizzard was looking for he's gonna head back down to the blue planet though likely to do dwarf castle with his newfound warp glitch caster in hand uh, but in that time tybalt has gone through and uh, caught up a little bit on check uh, still has not done the Golbez fight, though, at the top of the tower. Maybe waiting for a, a tower key to show up. Yes, uh, guess where the, guess and, where the and tower, it will. Guess where the tower key is. That's right. It's right yeah. here. He's actually going to get his hands on it, um, which, of course, drives runners basically near always directly to the tower, especially when you've got... You know, like, it's it's close, it's a double check, it's super efficient. Right, it drove Soapbox Gamer straight there. Soapbox Gamer is right on it, like... It's just even with the even with the kill of Golbez already done, it's like the tower boss is easy. It's not far. Could be Demis blocking up the harp. You don't know. Yeah, and and it's it's worth noting as well as we look at you know our runners all progressing through this. One of the things we kind of talked about was like their individual records or team records, and like if you watch Soapbox Gamer playing, for example, Soapbox Gamer yet to take a win in this tournament. The way that he's playing, it, that would astonish me by watching how good everyone is doing. But, uh, like, there's been no mistakes. Like, everything has been great. And, like, that just goes to show how flippin' good everybody is at this game now. Um, <laughs> that, like, a runner that good Either can way, somehow not have gotten the win. And there's that was, to boot. That, that was last week with a VT Afro as well, who in the interview yeah. was like, I haven't won a race. I'm like, I was blown. I didn't even know how to react. Speaking of summoning monsters, um, <laughs> I put Demis there. That was my fault. I apologize. Um, if the harp is there, do I get to take the rest of the night off? Like, if we get Demis harp, am I done? <laughs> I mean, if it's Demis harp, then aren't we all done in about 20 minutes? <laughs> you know what? You're right. We would we would be in at least no mode, if not go mode, yes. Would we blame you or blame Xenocat? That's my question. Uh, do your powers transcend Xenocat seats? You don't know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I'm here for it. I'm loving the witchcraft. It's fantastic. No, no, Chad. This is the one time you don't get to blame me. Thank you very much. I can't believe it. We've been blaming witches for over 400 years at this point. Why not stop? Why stop now? It, this is my fault. I take, I take credit. <laughs> But we do get a number of key item checks out of this. Uh, Soap going to show us what the key item check is out of the tower. Uh, where do you get a spoon? That is interesting because that puts Eddie back on the table. Uh, but probably not going to happen already with Crystal Cecil. Uh, so, yeah, Spoonward, I think, is going to have to wait. Maybe Fiery Blizzard not being uh, in possession of that adamant might take... Uh, take the Edward as a secondary or even tertiary Zerker and get rid of either Fu or Rosa. Uh, interesting to see what Fiery Blizzard is going to do with this. I think anyone with the Adamant Armor and the Crystal Sword already is going to be riding that horse to the finish line. But those without, I can definitely see uh, see that Edward potentially playing into the equation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Tybalt's at the top of the tower. Mr. JRPG's at the bottom of the Fame Arch here gonna get uh gonna get through this fight you know again putting a lot of eggs in the old paladin cecil basket here uh just swinging away because he can't berserk over poison because of how status effects work in final fantasy 4 so you have to wait until dr luke casts heal on i think it's his fifth or sixth action in the fight um which is a little annoying but hey what are you gonna do yeah, um, Doc, dr luke does a bunch of stuff and then stops doing stuff that's relevant and then starts doing stuff again it, it doesn't really ever be scary just annoying. Yep, Soapbox Gamer is going to go check Sheila 1 before checking uh, the mist check here. Uh, Tybalt, of course, is now at the top of the tower cleaning up this Golbez. Um, there's the heal now, so we'll see how Mr. JRPG continues progressing through this fight. Um, the Berserk is up. It's time. It's time for Cecil to get to get to fighting. Or burn a blink a guy, I guess. That also works. <laughs> Yeah, and we do see a passable item coming from Sheila 1. Uh, we can now shortcut our way to Zeromis, so a welcome sight for our runners, as if 
the Twin Harp or the Legend Sword are not on the blue planet, uh, then we can just leave the moon, complete those objectives, and take the shortcut to Z, uh, since, as you all may have guessed now, the pass was from Gila 1. Mr. JRPG drops Dr. Luggage here, gets his uh, adamant armor for his troubles. Um, we'll see if Rubikint is on the table or not here with the adamant armor, but it looks like this is... Uh, we're going to do some gearing up first. Uh, while Soapbox Gamer is going to go ahead and check uh, Rydia's sunbathing mother who has... All right, hey, well, it was a key item. I was wrong. I can't get we them all. Can get, we can get underground now. Yay! I can't believe I have to, like... <sighs> Worth it. No, uh, yeah. uh, we got a white shirt from the rat tail, by the way. Also, yay. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were <laughs> going to do that to me. <laughs> I have uh, to. Do you have? You didn't have to. There's nothing I you had to. There's nothing you have to do in this life when it comes to commentary. There is one thing I have to do. I have to thank all of our runners for putting on one heck of a show for us. And I have to thank RPG Limit Break for being a wonderful partner with us and helping us put on the uh, the Eblin Elixir League and these twin casts. And I have to thank our behind the scenes, Angie Dave and Bangagong doing the tracking, which is the hardest part of, uh, of these races, by the way, other than running. Uh, and then I have to thank our restreamer, Xenocat, and again, have to thank our runners, Fiery Blizzard, Tipalt, Mr. JRPG, and Soapbox Gamer. And I have to thank you, Demi, because you are just a wonderful human being, and you are keeping me honest in the comms booth, and I know how much you love getting underground. I'm going to have to put more butter on that toast, friend. Um, so, <laughs> Soapbox Gamer, at least like I believe, has exhausted all desires to be on Earth at this point in time. Has not located the Rat Tail. Did not cash out the Luka Key yet, though. So, no Rat Tail in hand. Uh, Fire Blizzard warped for it. So, that's done and is on his way out of the tower with this, uh, with this Mist Dragon uh, put in its place. Tybalt is going to go do Sheila 1 before uh, hitching a ride back up top which will then lead to Rat Tail to check that objective off the old list as well, um, which has already been done by Fiery Blizzard. So things are going to be heating up here. Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt will both be uh, probably heading up to the moon fairly soon and fairly together. Uh, Mr. JRPG did decide to take on this Rubicant with the full-powered Cecil, as you can see. Uh, Crystal Sword Cecil does not do as much damage as uh, Ice Brand Cecil does on this fight, but, you know, it's like the difference of a swing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's still one of those situations where it's going to be okay. <laughs> uh, you're still going to get through the fight. More people may may die, um, but that is a, a sacrifice that Crystal Sword Cecil's willing to make. I'm holy man, he is. It's it's so very Zap Brannigan of him. And this is an interesting fight that Soapbox Gamer is showing us. Uh, the dolls, this is where... Uh, Fusoya would actually come in handy, or <laughs> we might actually be better off just getting to a big doll and letting Cecil go burr. It might just be faster to throw like a blizzard, a firebomb, some sort of uh, HP base J item with one of our, like a, a Sid or, a, a, you know, a Cecil in this case. Get rid of those front three, get Cecil zerked up, and just take out the big doll because it'll go down like three, four swings. Yeah, it's really interesting. That's sort of a strategy you don't see every day on this fight, certainly. But of course, our, our seed has had one black mage, and nobody nobody but Fiery Blizzard has Fu yet, so that's how that goes. But setting up multiple Zerks here, uh, the notable thing is that the Cals do need to go through one one row of turns here before, because these are already pre-queued, so the next action after these will be the will be the transform. Uh, no hourglasses. Chad is asking about hourglasses. None in shops in all five of them. We've seen them all. Um, hourglasses were the missing item here. We had two of them available to us, uh, which have been used on all measure of boxes, but they have not been used um, anywhere of note um, in regards to actually getting more than the two. Yeah, it looks like on, uh, on Soapbox Gamer screen there is down to one Cal who has decided to be very generous, generous and punch until it's not generous anymore, and then it decides to turn into a big doll. Uh, again, though, I don't think this is going to be a problem. 
Cecil doing 5k a swing, it's only going to take three, maybe four swings, and uh, the, the big cow brain of doll is going to go away. We're not, or we shouldn't, see the ran out of power script. So should be all things looking peachy on Soapbox Gamer's side. Fiery Blizzard going to be turning in Sheila 1 to get the pass. Tybalt going to uh, now collect that pass. I believe has already gotten his white shirt as well. And is going to be a little bit ahead of Fiery Blizzard getting to the moon. Big difference being Tybalt has that adamant armor, uh, whereas Fiery Blizzard does not. So that adamant armor has caught Tybalt up a little bit to Fiery Blizzard and actually had him now pass, uh, even doing an extra Luka Cave and an extra Ruby fight, but is down the launching of the whale and the character and shop up on the moon. So those two extremely close. We'll see how much of an advantage that adamant armor ends up being. Uh, Mr. JRPG going through Dwarf Castle. Uh, we'll see if he stops in the Luka Cave and picks up that rat tail, or if he opts to uh, just head moonward along with Soapbox Gamer once he gets his Darkness Crystal from that Golbez. Yep, Dancing Dolls Calcabrina uh, gave us a second Moon Veil, which is much less exciting now that we have an Adamant Armor uh, floating around on our party, um, at least on Tybalt's side and on Soapbox Gamer's side. Uh, Tybalt is currently on Earth, while Fire Blizzard is headed on up, so it looks like it was time to maybe do a little bit of restocking here. I'm not certain what he's buying, but we'll keep an eye out because that seems important. Um, wines for Soapbox Gamer. Um, you just buy the entire box, I guess. Uh, wine by the case. We've got Ether 2s also by the case, so loading up. Oh yeah, Mr. JRPG also has the Adamant, that's correct. Uh, did actually pick that up, and the extra glass helmet. Um, so Fire Blizzard maybe takes back a bit of an edge here overall, coming back up to the moon first, um, as uh, Tybalt is going to give us the second half of the cutscene right now, and probably is going to head to the shop first. Yeah, uh, our top two runners definitely neck and neck, uh, uh, Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt. Again, this is a twin cast, so the top two runners on your screen, Fiery Blizzard and Tybalt, are playing against each other. And then the bottom two racers on your screen, Mr. JRPG and Soapbox are playing against each other. So this is not a free for all four way race. Uh, these are two 1v1 matchups running the same seed, uh, just with two different sets of runners. So to avoid any potential confusion for those who may have just joined or were wondering what was going on, that is the layout of what is happening. Yep, Mr. JRPG is going to wrap up the party here in Dwarf Castle now. So gonna be tacking on, this was the tower key. Uh, Fire Blizzard and Tybalt now. So Tybalt did load up on wine. Fire Blizzard's gonna top down, skip skipping Cave Bahamut and starting immediately on the Murasame altar. Um, so this is gonna be a top down clear. It's gonna find orbs. Um, gonna go, uh, gonna go for Blink Zerk strats here. So it's gonna blink the attacker. <laughs> Uh, Zerk everybody, and just using two white mages, Rosa and Fusoya, just keep blinking that orb so it does not die. Um, you'll get Globe 199 if you kill both of the front orbs, but if only one dies, um, it's no big deal. So, by setting up the fight this way and then just using Nuke on the, the front orb just to torch it on the spot, uh, basically now we just will have Rosa and Fu on healing slash blinking duty, and this fight will end uh, eventually, when when <laughs> our boys decide to target correctly. See, those Zerkers, uh, they do what my Zerkers do, which is I see shiny thing, I attack shiny thing. Um, they, they, don't, they don't realize that you're not supposed to go after the shiny thing. They're just dead set on it. Uh, also, rather than Zerking Edge here, for me, this is the easiest spoon dart of my life. Uh, I'll just let Cecil go go berserk here, and then just dart the spoon for 10,000 damage. Uh, join that up with the Meteo that's being channeled by Fu. The only way you lose this fight is to try to get cheeky with it. When you have the spoon, I just love the idea of leveraging it in this fight to make it easier. I'm a huge fan of playing Q, but that spoon is also going to burn a hole in your pocket. So this is a perfect fight to use it on. Yeah, um, is gonna do the Meteo instead here, so locked Fu out of the queue for a minute, which is fine to do those big quad nines to everything. So I guess we're gonna see a quad nine, but a slightly different expected one. Um, rocks fall, everybody dies. Fire Blizzard's gonna give us a look at the Murasame altar, while Tybalt is headed down deeper. Uh, likely to go do Ribbon Room first, because it's the double check, so it's an efficiency play, but Ooh. man, 
when you're when you're on, you're on, and Fiery Blizzard's on in this tournament. Let's be real for a minute. Um, as he locates go mode, he's got some music for you, friends. Um, he's skipping town. <gasps> we've got Harp. We've got Giant. We've got the end of the seed in view. Yeah, and worth noting for Fiery Blizzard, uh, Fiery Blizzard now looking to go 5-1 in the tournament, which is extraordinary for someone whose main game isn't even free enterprise. Uh, Fiery Blizzard is a legendary Final Fantasy V career day runner, uh, arguably the best to ever do it with his, you know, uh, immense amount of tournament success over there. So to be 5-1 in, in this community um, on these flag sets as difficult as they are against the level of, you know, competition that he's up against is nothing short of extraordinary. I mean, skills are transferable. That's the thing I don't think that everybody kind of right kind of gets at the end of the day is that you know you bring skill from one game and you're able to bring it to others uh you know like i know i've been a player of multiple randomizers uh in my time as well and it's just like yeah i i basically probably go in and i have top 32 multiple randomizers so you know fiery blizzard being the best to ever do it and one means that you know you're transferring top eight skills to others potentially which is fantastic yeah, definitely makes sense. Meanwhile, we see uh, we see Tybalt is uh, doing a fight that exists. Uh, he is life glitching and going after some pink puffs, uh, bonking away with Rosa, attacking away with Cecil. Definitely going to get some XP off of this fight. And maybe... Well, no, we're not on the Free Enterprise channel. We're on the RPG Limit Break channel, so we can't shut down the channel if this happens. Oh my god, he got the drop. <laughs> it happened. Oh my goodness. We what can't shut it world? down, though. We can't shut it down. We want to <laughs> shut it down. Wrong channel, Tibble. Ah, uh, man. Hey, everybody, that's a 1 in 64 drop. <laughs> well, I mean... I can't, I can't believe Free Enterprise is over. I've been doing it for five years, but everybody, great. It's been a pleasure. It's been a joy. This is Devering 2 signing off for the last time. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. It's not on the FE channel. It's on RPG Limit Break. We can't shut it down. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> uh, so Tybalt may end up losing this race to Fiery Blizzard. These things happen, but uh, he wins our heart. Uh, yeah, Tybalt is the champion of the people today by far. Uh, Soapbox Gamer, of course, is drilling down the moon here at the bottom side, uh, is here doing the, is doing Evil Wall. Uh, Mr. JRPG, of course, has got the tower key and is at the top of the tower wrapping up and fighting Colbez here. Sees with adamant armor flexing, um, you know, because that's what he does. Um, you know, the, the competing law firm of Cecil, Cecil, and Cecil will flex on you. Um, we don't have the email address. Um, but yeah, Fire Blizzard's now got Leviathan here, so... I don't know if he's really afraid of anything at this point, but he's gonna zerk his rose and just keep going. All right, and to uh, to catch everybody up who just might be joining us, yes, Tibal did get a adamant armor drop from the pink puffs. Uh, so if you missed it, that's that's on you. Uh, hopefully, someone uh, will have clipped it. I'm I'm sure it'll be out there uh, soon, TM. Uh, but yeah, uh, pretty cool stuff. Definitely not something you see very often. Uh, Soapbox Gamer, though, still going to town on this evil wall, which is also going to town on him. This is an ugly fight, by the way. Uh, Fiery Blizzard, you know, that Leviathan, frankly, at the element spot is free. Uh, the CPU spot could be a thing, but probably not too scary. And Mr. JRPG probably going to be joining our other runners on the moon. Uh, interestingly enough, because of where that Twin Harp is, this maybe ain't over for Mr. JRPG and Soapbox Gamer. Uh, Soapbox Gamer looked to have been quite a bit ahead, but the top-down play of Mr. JRPG goes with it could pay out in spades for him. The tough thing, though, is that neither of those runners have the Rat Tail, so neither have checked Luka, and neither had the Warp available when they did Dwarf Castle. So they don't have Go Mode, right? We know where it is. They don't have access to it. So even though top-down would get you the heart first, like... The gamble play would be, does Harp have Legend Sword, right? Do you just avoid the moon and just decide to say, uh, to heck with it, I'm going up? Like, I don't know. Like, 
these things happen. The two chests, of course, here under the ribbon room had item and also item. I think there was a Bahamut Orb was one of them. Uh, yeah, Radia, she's not here. Um, but this this clear will continue for Tybalt and Soapbox Gamer at this point. Yeah, uh, Bahamut Orb and a Murasame. So I guess we have Murasame and Masamune Edge, uh, just as the you know original developers of the game intended. Uh, but not really going to help against this fight because it's probably still faster to just uh, let the king and queen of Eblin uh, just do their thing and cast some fire ones and fire twos and then disappear and let uh, let our party be on its merry way. While Fiery Blizzard does get through that Leviathan at the element spot, all 65,000 health of it. And uh, we're going to get to see what is at the CPU spot. Uh, this could be spooky, even with an adamant armor Cecil. Well, this isn't on the moon, but uh, old googly eyes come into play at what is generally a scary spot if you don't have an Adam and Armor Crystal Sword Cess, or even just a Crystal Sword Cess. Yeah, this spot melee is surprisingly hard because orbs, of course, don't have an attack command in their uh, their repertoire. Um, and I think that a lot of the actual magic power is just backed up by the fact that Globe 199 has a, a amazing power on its own without the actual spot. Um, so yeah, uh, but this shouldn't go badly. Obviously, you know, Crystal Sword Cecil, Crystal Sword Cecil. We can only we can only use so many different euphemisms for how Crystal Sword Cecil does 5,000 damage a swing under the effect of being Berserk um, at a spot that has only about 30,000 hit points to work through. Um, Osura is a little annoying down here at the bottom, uh, but you know we do have wall casters, we do have uh, double reflect star veils. Uh, Asura will just cast healing spells and counter attack. Um, obviously, a adamant armor Cecil is going to ignore the counterattack side of it, but you know the healing can be annoying until you get that second wall up. And now that the second wall is up, the fight is completely free. Yeah, a Surin, you know, can be very dangerous early on, especially uh, when you're only dealing piddly amounts of damage. You know, 100, 200 damage at a time. You got to do 3,000 health worth. You got to do some kind of you know arcane and exotic strats to get through the fight. But now it's just a uh, you know, push the Bacchus button, put the wall up, things go burr, bosses fall over, you win the fight. Soapbox Gamer getting through that uh, that fight pretty rapidly there. Tibalt going to join him in completing that, but Fiery Blizzard, Giant Dunn, uh, gets a Palom, nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> not part of this team, is about an hour too late to be relevant, uh, and Fiery Blizzard just has a Twin Harp uh, to complete, going to swag fly, uh, over to the Troya area, has his levels, has 10 key items from the giant. Uh, not a whole lot left in the seat for Fiery Blizzard to do. Tybalt going to need a miracle here to uh, to have a chance against Fiery Blizzard, even though he's already won. Yeah, especially because down below where, you know, you finish off this Asura and you get um, a big pile of zero. Um, so that's a little unfortunate, but, you know, that's kind of how it goes. You you decide your route you've got the thing with the moon is everyone's got a route they like everyone routes the moon the way they route the moon be it top down uh some backwards ways like crystal sword altar first i don't know who would do that though um <laughs> and you know you make those decisions and you sort of stick to them speaking of sticking to a decision mr jrpg is going to make sure that he's got the levels to clean up uh giant and anything else in his party path uh gonna take on a few eggs here just make sure that he's got a pile of levels for the moon which you know Newer runners especially, this is always a good a good place to kind of pick up some safety. This is the fastest way to grind in the game. Uh, it doesn't have 10 key items yet, which means 34 grand to fight, but still, putting on a couple hundred thousand experience points, not exactly a hard thing to do here. And is making the play. So Mr. JRPG going to get that rat tail uh, while DKC, uh, good old Dark Knight Cecil on Soapbox Gamer side, again, without a cursed ring, tough to survive. This is a nasty spot to find a DKC at. These waves are going to be doing 900 to 1100, and if you don't have the right people taking actions immediately, you will fall over. Uh, we need to get a curative out sooner than later to live through this, and it's not going to be in time. It needs to be a little quicker on that trigger finger, but we're going to have to stop talking, and by we, I mean me, because uh, I'm just blabbering over here, and I guess it's music time when we're supposed to shush or something.
Well, that was fast. <laughs> No dudes, just dead. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, Excalibur, I choose you, and 8,000 damage later, we're out of that fight. Uh, easy peasy, free as a bird, sixth objective down. Uh, we are one We are one quick black chocobo flight and a walk away from the Z fight at this point in time. Soapbox Gamer did locate the pan at the Crystal Sword Altar, which could be Forge. Could be good. I don't know, let's take, I'd take that home. I would certainly chase that, if nothing else. <laughs> That's too... Two cracks at the legend sword, uh, and a rat tail. Uh, worth noting as well that uh, so Boxing are going to pick up the twin harp. So while Tibalt is going through the CPU and Mr. JRPG is getting his rat tail, Soapbox Gamer potentially going to give us new information. Fiery Blizzard going to give us some of the most important information though, uh, and uh, that's going to have to do with the big bad final boss, uh, which is of course the inventory boss. Uh, because it's just funnier that way. Let's put some things in a trash can. Karate geese, Dragoon equipment, because we need to make space so people can be equipped with stuff, things. Uh, Rosa needs a better staff. I guess it's going to be a silver staff. That's <laughs> questionably better. It, it's going to be an elven bow, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I guess we've got to ask the most important question for Enterprise, of course. The big bad's down here is Aromas Big Z, the master of disaster, the lord of destruction. He's here to ruin our day and big bang our party into next month and make us all cry. That said, he takes about 600 or so different shapes and forms and colors and pictures, uh, but he is here waiting for us, and so we do have to ask the most important question of them all. Goodness me, get some Z flags rolling, because of course we do need to find out whose butt are we going to kick tonight? And is it cute? And does it have a hat? I guess we're past tax time, so I can't ask that one. What other questions do we have? Uh, hmm. Mm, who's a, Yeah, no, I, I don't know. What else do we do? What are the other questions? I'm out of the loop on this. <laughs> if you're out of the loop, how do you think I feel? <laughs> <laughs> fair play, fair play. I, for one, hope that somehow it doesn't have a hat or a butt. Just so we can issue all the memes... And, uh, like, we've already won, right? Tibal gave us an Adam and Armor from a Pink Puff. Uh, we've seen great gameplay from all of our runners. So, yeah. I hope we get a troll. And we get a nice, big troll Z sprite. Uh, the fairies want Tibble to have another adamant armor because they've decided that he deserves it and has earned it because he's the best. Uh, Mr. JRPG is turning in the <laughs> tail, rat, the rat tail here for a white shirt, but also to checkbox number six because he did do the Luca Cave check that Soapbox Gamer has issued. Um, and of course, Fire Blizzard, what do you got, my friend? Here we go. The true colors emerge, grr. Er, channeling its inner uh, bell nab, uh, we we get a can cam land. What uh, what's this from? I I don't know video games. I just surprised. Ah, oh, Final Fantasy XI. There you go. Never played it. Thank you, chat. Y'all are smart. I'd say that you. I'd say that you didn't. That I'd say that you miss out on something, but that'd be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Final Fantasy XI was super cool for its time, but, you know, it was one of those games. So strategy for this fight, of course, is that uh, Edge has drank wine, Cecil has drank wine, uh, Fusoya has thrown a silk web out to slow this fight down, and that's it. There's no more strategy, really. Um, well, Starvale is going to go out, and I guess we're going to reflect his spells off Sid for speed here. Um, but yeah. <laughs> you know, like... Like, a lot of the time, you get Zeromus fights with lower levels or, or, you know, tougher parties. The tough thing with this party is that we've got, uh, we've got giant levels behind us and all the power we could ever ask for anymore. Yeah, we have all of the levels. Um, Tibble, meanwhile, showing us the treasury. Uh, this is a T-standard, effectively, treasury. Max tier 5 on T-Wildish. He's getting stuff that exists. Uh, none of it really is an upgrade. Maybe a ninja sword, but I think we're on Moss Samura. Yeah, let's be and, real. Let's yeah. be real. No, 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 nothing better than five out of ten for that, unfortunately. Um, them's the rules, I guess. But yeah, Fiery Blizzard is all set here, and this fight looks 
uh, calm, collected, and all well put together, so I, uh, I suspect that this is going to go pretty well. Tybalt looks like his job now is going to go up and chase this Earth Crystal. Alas, alas, my friend, you are getting baited by the Earth. Uh, the moon had your go mode, but you didn't know that. Yeah, unfortunate for Tybalt, he picked the path um, that would yield the most in the way of resources the most quickly, uh, the bottom of the moon. Sadly for this seed, it was objectively incorrect. You can never know that going in, though. Uh, rando going to, in fact, rando. That's what it do. Uh, meanwhile, Fiery Blizzard chugging away here. Cecil and Edge zerking. Fu reflecting nukes. Gotta be out of MP soon here. Uh, Mr. JRPG heading up to the giant. And Soapbox Gamer starting his way through the giant. Soapbox Gamer is in go mode. Oh, no, he's not, actually. Soapbox Gamer going to do the harp and going to do the giant, leaving him one objective shy, uh, which will either be the forge or the uh, rat tail from Luca. Whereas Mr. JRPG, uh, once he does the Marasame altar, uh, will be in go mode uh, if he opts to go top down. So our bottom two runners here, Mr. JRPG and Soapbox Gamer, both one objective from go mode. Uh, Tybalt, one objective away as well, has the giant available. Fiery Blizzard, no objectives left. Uh, crumbling goes Zeromis, and uh, that was a pretty smooth fight. And let's see if we can get Fiery in for an interview. Uh, faster than a, faster than 90 minutes is uh, utterly blistering on these flags. Like, yeah. like anytime you can cross that line. If you told me I was going to finish a, a, a finish a set of these flags in an hour 30, I would just go, man, that's fantastic. I had a great run and I feel good. Uh, and Fire Blizzard still would have beat me by an hour, uh, by a minute and eight seconds. <laughs> yeah, I think we are joined by Fiery Blizzard, though. Uh, GG to you, Fiery Blizzard. Very well run. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed that beginning that we uh, conjured up. That was fantastic. I was curious if it was a throwback, because uh, Woo Bear and I had done that exact thing, minus the You Fools, uh, in his easy five rate. So I was curious if that was just... Uh, uh, if that was a, an homage thing, or if it was just a, an off-the-cuff thing that y'all went. It was both. Uh, harp being objective, and you know, you gotta do your objective, so we went to Harp immediately. Uh, <laughs> turns out you can't do that, but yes, it was a little bit of an homage to you and Wu back in ZZ5. Uh, we were worried that we were gonna get Harp as the starting key item, actually, and so our plan, our backup plan, was to loot all the Chocobo forests, ah. if that were to be the case. I like it. Now, I do have to let you know that uh, that after admin review, uh, we have declared Tybalt the winner of the race. Um, so, you know, I, I do apologize, but he did ping puffs and got an adamant armor drop. So even though you may be five and one and you won the race, uh, Tybalt won the race. Wait, why are we still restreaming? <laughs> A good dead. question. I am so confused. You know, I'm, I'm fine going four and two, whatever. <laughs> GG is Tybalt. You win. Not gonna fight this Golbez, 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 and Golbez suit. No point. Well, I mean, well, here's the interesting thing, right? We're on RPG Limit Break. We're not on Free Enterprise. So how does that work? That's, that's what I was bringing up and why I was saying we couldn't shut it down. There's layers to this, man. Yep. On the flip, Tybalt's chase of the pan has led to go mode for Tybalt, as that is a legend sword. So he is now uh, he is now four gen giant away from completion. So that's great. Um, so there were two routes to victory, and it seems that the top down route was a hair faster here. But Mr. JRPG finishes up the Leviathan, um, has turned on the jets here a little bit, and maybe a maybe a I just go to Murasame first away from actually getting right back into this race. Um, that bottom race is about to get real interesting, depending on some routing choices and what Soapbox Gamer decides to do, whether it's clean up the Fey March or, you know, go do Luka Key or, uh, you know, you left a check on the moon, friend. It's still there. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Fiery did want to ask, uh, you know, as you got to the moon, there's always that big decision of, you know, bottom up, top down. In this case, giant first, like there's a bunch of different choices you can make. Um, you went Murrah first, not even peeking the, uh, you know, the, the Cape Bahamut, um, or you may have earlier, I, I don't recall, but 
What kind of drove that decision to top down? Uh, one key item to go mode, and I didn't want to walk down the LST if I didn't have to. The, I works. mean, the whole thing about it was at the point where I was turning in DMS or setting up Shield 1, I was thinking, I want 10 key items, and if I get a pass, I'm going to go to the moon. If I didn't get a pass, then I was going to go and clean up the Fey March, which apparently had an admin armor. But yeah, I mean, it was a combination of getting 10 key items through that dwarf Luka key or dwarf warp glitch, then the tower key and then the demist and then the pass was just like, OK, I'm just going to go move now and see if I can just spike something at the top. Mm -hmm. And if not, then, well, I can go to the bottom of the moon and get more of a grind before whatever awaits me at the giant, which wasn't too bad either way. And going back earlier in the seed, um, you had a party that existed. It kind of could maybe do some things a little bit. And then Cecil showed up on the hook route. Uh, you go and you do all the trap chests. makes a lot of sense. You get the power, you get the stick for the guy and all that. You get to the Fey March, and the first thing you see in the Fey March is Crystal Sword. What's your general thought process, like, as you chose to do the boxes, then the flip side of that, seeing the crystal sword. Was there any nervousness, any feeling towards it? Kind of, kind of just take us. No, I mean, yeah, there were guards. Like it was going to be a free ruby spot, but you didn't know what was going to be at the King Gwyn Eblen spot, which is often, honestly, the more scary of the two spots. And I don't know. I felt like it pretty safe if you're pro. If it's a hook route, you're going to clear those trap chests, especially with the guy. So I didn't think I would be behind really all too much just by clearing the Evelyn trap chest because again it's just like you have a Cecil. The right play if you have a hook route is just to go into Evelyn Castle. And if there's a free crystal sword somewhere, so be it. I mean I liked it. It was a free crystal sword. It was an improvement for the Excal and I eventually came up with an edge. Edge did one thing besides drink wine. Well that was through an Excalibur during uh the Pale Dim fight. But yeah you get a crystal sword and you're just like well Seed is pretty much solved. So, <laughs> yeah, at that point, it's just like, well, let's just go uh, see. I think at that point, I had the Darkness Crystal, right, from Golbez? Yes, yeah, because you went to Golbez immediately upon getting underground. Uh, didn't go to Dwarf, which, you know, could have gotten you a tower key and made routing a little efficient, but you just went right for the objective, got your Golbez, got your, uh, your Darkness. Yeah, I figured there was a chance I would get something to give me a warp caster, which was, even though we had a Luka key in hand, uh, I don't know, I felt like I played that pretty well, or I got lucky that there was exactly a warp caster up on the moon. I think I may have been out of characters that weren't going to learn warp by that point. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it just happened to be, uh, it worked out pretty well. Uh, I saw that Fey March, I was tempted to take it, but I was like, this is going to be slow. Let me do other things, like go see who's on the moon. And just, it all kind of fell into place. Uh, I don't even know if that was Element. Well, I guess that had to be Ruby at King, because Elements was at Miss Cave. Yeah. So, yeah, it just, it worked out perfectly. Saw orbs, you know, at the top there. I'm like, well, I have a perfect plan for this. I have a heroin road that's been on this Rosa since, like, the beginning of the seed. And then blinked up drank wine, and of course cast Medio. Yay, Medio! Not as many Medios as I was hoping to spend. I do want to say though, I ended this tour- uh, so I, I've played my sixth match in the tournament, so I have no more matches to play except for the consolation game in week nine or whatever you want to call it, week ten. Uh, so I ended this this tournament sorted in the same way that I started this tournament, as I told Xenocat earlier, with an unused Moonveil in my inventory. <laughs> as is so often the case. The throwback, that's what it is. Well, I will say, you've put on a heck of a show the, the entire tournament. Um, you know, going 5 and one is nothing short of incredible. We kind of alluded to that this isn't even your primary game that you play. That, you know, you're incredibly good at this. You're even better at, you know, career day. Um, but just a, a heck of a job putting on a whale of a performance for your team. 
uh, really keeping them in almost every week. Uh, you know, just a, a phenomenal job overall. Um, Demi, do you have any questions for Fiery? I kind of, uh, kind of stole the interview there. Are you gonna win ZZ6? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, is it going to be another boss hunt? No, I, it, all I hope is to get better at this game and start being competitive with the, the you know, higher tier players of this game. Uh, they are certainly people to look up to in terms of how to play Free Enterprise. I, like I said, I love watching Possum stream and sort of give advice about how to play this game quickly. Uh, Rybon's always just going to be, you know, sort of up there. Paying, and by sort of up there, I mean ridiculously difficult to beat Martin, Pancras. They're always fun to sort of watch them stream and sort of try to pick up different ways how to play the game. So I really have to just thank the community and sort of giving advice about how to play this game more quickly, how to play this game better. Uh, I've been really enjoying my time playing Free Enterprise. Awesome. Well, that, you know, I personally appreciate those kind words throwing me in with the... Uh... <laughs> Such luminaries as uh, Pancras, Rybon, and Martin. Uh, thank you for that, and thank you for being, you know, one of the up and comers in this, putting on a heck of a show, and just uh, doing a great job at everything FE related. Yeah, no, it'll, my pleasure, and obviously I look forward to going back to, well, at the end of this, going to club season and seeing what comes up from there, and you know, continuing to play the game. Uh, but obviously, I will. I'll let you guys commentate on the race again. Uh, Demery and Possum, obviously, thank you so much for commentating. Uh, don't even know who else is tracking. Dave and Bingong, also for tracking. Xenocat, of course, for the restream in this lovely little seed. Uh, like the FF9 music, unfortunately not an FF9 sprite, but we can't have it all. Uh, and I guess I have to shout out RPG Limit Break as well uh, for letting us you know, use their stream. But thank you again, and I, I'm looking forward to watching this one back, especially seeing your reaction to uh, the adamant armor drop. Uh, I cannot believe that happened, and I'm looking forward to watching it back. Now, there's a clip of it as well. Uh, I'm sure it, if it hasn't already been posted, uh, it will be shortly on the, the FE channel, probably spoiled, or the FE Discord, excuse me. So keep your eyes out for that if you just want to look at the clip. But yeah, otherwise, definitely would say to watch it back. You ran incredibly well. And, uh, GG's as your tourney comes to an end, and we definitely hope to see you for ZZ6. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to the Ocho. So many memes, so little time, I guess. Um, <laughs> bottom race getting interesting, by the way. Mr. Yes. JRPG did top down, so is gonna get the harp first. So this is going to be harp to leaving to going and cashing it out immediately. Soapbox Gamer is about to wrap up Tower of Zot, though, is at the second fight already. Like, obviously, uh, 9,000 hit point bosses at this point in the game don't hold a candle to whatever it is that we're bringing to the table. So Mr. JRPG does still need to get through the harp cutscene in the harp, while Soapbox Gamer needs to fly down Forge and then fly back up. Uh, other thing that Mr. JRPG does not have is he does not have his hands on the pass. Uh, no sheet of paper. Yeah, so no Sheila 1 for Mr. JRPG. Uh, Soapbox Gamer also, by completing the forge, is going to get a fiery hammer. Uh, Tybalt was kind enough to show us by completing the forge uh, that it is the big hidden stick for Sid, the fiery hammer. That's his crystal sword. So that is, all things considered, I would say advantage Soapbox Gamer, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of three to five minutes. However, uh, this is still Sea Hero. It's highly unlikely that a wipe would happen given you have a fiery hammer, or excuse me, not a fiery hammer, yeah, it would be a fiery hammer for Soapbox Gamer, a crystal sword, uh, a Masamura Edge. It's extraordinarily unlikely that a wipe would happen for Soapbox Gamer. But if one does, this is about the right time frame to put these two incredibly close. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a bad start to the fight, right? Like. It doesn't matter how powerful you are, if you mess up the start of the fight and take a full big bang and it, you know, does enough damage to, you know, reduce your, uh, reduce, it, like, your mages to ash and then you're sort of on support, you know, you're on full DPS, but, you know, you might get uncomfortable, you might reset, you never know, I've seen that happen, so, you know, it's kind of what it comes down to at that point. 
And looks like on Tybalt's side, Cecil is zerking away. Silkweb comes out. Again, I don't recall seeing a single curse during in any shop, in any box. Uh, so our runners are running with a bit of awkward agility. Uh, but that Spoondar comes out for 10k. Cecil hitting about 6k. Kane even pitching in for almost 3,000. Okay, I lied. Cecil hitting for 7,700, not 6k. <laughs> Silly me. This, uh, this fight seems to be pretty well in hand. Rosa at over 2,700 HP is going to make it very difficult to, uh, to go through and and see a bad outcome for this fight for Tybalt. 2700 and he's got Tybalt has three adamant armors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Soapbox Gamer does get into official go mode, has the pass, has the crystal in hand. Uh, Mr. JRPG going to give us one more rendition of the harp, um, but we're going to we're going to stay tuned to the, the Z fights and just uh, just see how those go for our runners. Uh, music is cool, don't get us wrong, but uh, we want you to, to still pay attention to what's actually going on uh, at the end of the seed here, since there's a lot of exciting action in these four player races. Uh, Tybalt also does have three adamant armors worth noting. Uh, one courtesy of Dr. Luggage in the Fame March, one courtesy of the Pink Tail, and one courtesy of the Pink Puffs. In case you missed it, he got the draw. But we do have Mr. JRPG getting the the harp music going. Soapbox Gamer about to head into Z. Tybalt uh, gets the snap, crackle, pop, or boom, or shake, or crisp, or whatever it is that happens uh, when you defeat a Zeromus. The power of adamant armors. Uh, not able to overcome the power of uh, getting out routed. Uh, so Tybalt does, unfortunately for him, uh, take the L tonight. But is it really a loss? when the man, the Mr. Legend, joins us in the booth after getting the draw. Let's just start right there, Tybalt. <laughs> GG's, friend. Thank you. Uh, you should have heard my reaction. Uh, you can probably hear him like five states away. I uh, is it restream safe? Yeah. Uh, okay. 80-20, <laughs> let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's just say, let's just say the booth popped off. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, like, the roof of my apartment is just gone. <laughs> Cause, like, you know, when you get to the end of the, you know, the tournament like this, you know, there's situations where you know you're not going to be able to get to the top 40 of the playoffs. At that point, just have fun. And, you know, having the fun of, you know, paying homage to Gilbert Godfrey at the beginning with, you know, the, you fools. You know, I tried to meme as much as I can. You're like, I need some levels. Let's do some pink puffs. And then to get the drop. Unrestream, nonetheless. Yeah, no, I can't top that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thankful it's on RPG Limit Breaker. We actually would have had to shut down the broadcast. So thank you for choosing the correct channel uh, to get the drop on. Ah. Uh, yeah, I had a bit of a control. My battery died on my controller during the Lugay fight. <laughs> In case you're wondering why there was no actions happening. I had to quickly and find some delays. Thankfully, that fight is basically free, so not too much concern. Uh, take us through kind of the, the early part of the seed, though. You and Fiery Blizzard, uh, you know, you wouldn't know it, of course, but y'all were basically neck and neck for, like, the entirety of the seed until Fiery Blizzard went top down and you went bottom up, and, you know, it, it'd be like that sometimes. Um, you're going through the overworld. You have kind of this potato party. You're doing your thing. You see the guy, you leave, you go get your, your holy sword, you do your trap chest and all that. You immediately get underground, you get your crystal sword. What's kind of your mindset, or you get your crystal sword from the Famark freebie. What's your mindset doing the boxes, getting the crystal sword, kind of all of that all together? I mean, I got in the x so I'm like, cool, awesome, you know, I, I've got all the levels I want. I hope to get a black mage before doing dwarf. You know, maybe I can sit there and, you know, do the Fey March freebie, maybe pick up, you know, Baron Key or Earth Crystal, just maybe get a Black Mage so I can just warp with uh, Dwarf. 
And then I get the crystal sword. I'm like, okay. And I see the bosses down there, and I'm like, you know, I got the levels. I can anchor with the dwarf axe. I can take this. And then to get the atom, I'm like, okay, that turns Ruby to free. So let's just clear out the Fey March. And I'm like, at that point, I'm like, am I really going to get a black mage before doing dwarf? I could do gold at the top of tower. I could do dwarf and hope. Or just bite the bullet and let's just do Luca. So I decided to go do Luke and I get the rats. I'm like, okay, cool. That paid out. But I'm not, I, I still need you know, another cannon for darkness or something that leads to darkness. All right, fine. But I'll do dwarf just because it's right there and easy. And it paid out with the tower keys. I'm like, oh, well, I can just fully clear the underground in one fell swoop. Let's go. And then it get demissed at tower key. I'm like, well, okay. So I've got a whole bunch of chaining things. You know, I've got Shield One to turn in. I got the Rat Tail turn. I got demissed. I'm like, let's just get all the freebies done. And and after you do the tire, the get in the dark test, I'm like, okay, I need Twin Harp, Legend Sword. I you know, it's another digit giant. So I'm looking for two key items. I've got the pass. There's more items down at the bottom, so I'll do bottom up. And I think that's where this race really came down to was the, the bottom up versus top down play. I went with the numbers versus just going straight top down. And you know, that's the play you do. Yep, you made a choice. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> as simple as that. Yeah. Um hey. In the bottom one holding no key items, I'm like, where are all the key items? Is it like behind Baron or something like that? Because that was the only or Baron or Pan. I'm like, what's going on? And I did, I mean, with the two adamants I had, or three, I think, no, I only had two at that time. I'm like, there's really not a boss that really punishes me for not really healing because I've got all this equipment and, well, CPU showed up. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, fine. You know, I took the wipe and I'm like, do I really want to fight CPU at this party? No. Do I want to take the 50 50 like Baron Key or Twin Harp? Uh, I've got two on Earth, and if it's Forge, I still have to be on Earth anyways, so let's just go follow the pan. And, you know, long chain into Legend Star, which is great, but still a long chain to go through. Right. Yeah, the Twin Heart chain or lack thereof, definitely a quicker path through. I do want to hop in real quick and just say GG is a soapbox gamer uh, taking the win, his first win of the tournament. Uh, again, incredible that it's only his first one of the tournament with how well he's been playing. Um, getting off the Schneid, uh, finishing officially 148.39. So it does get the win over Mr. JRPG. Uh, going to uh, put a little bit of a damper on the the playoff hopes for Rydia's Rebels as they're now going to need to come back the rest of the week and uh, finish this out strong to continue their push. Uh, but Tybalt, uh, you know, do you have any final thoughts on the seed uh, or anything else tournament related? And also Demi, do you have any questions for Tybalt? Uh, I want to make sure that if there's anything that's been missed, that, that we get it. Tybalt, are you going to win CZ6? I, I mean, I hope to. Like, I've, I've done some decent runs in tournaments, but it usually doesn't pay out for me. So, I, mean, I, I hope to. Like, I hope to get good enough to get maybe to the top 16 in, in, a, in a tournament. Um, you know, like in this situation, I tried to meme as best I could. You know, I, I coffined the Porum. I, I dropped the key down the well. Uh, Great of the Treasury. I couldn't do the final one of Kamikaze and Z. I tried, but it just was too fast of a fight. Huh. Trying to do all the memes for fun. Well, I mean, I thoroughly enjoy this tournament. You know, I hope in the future we do something similar to this again, maybe for an off-season tournament. Um, you know, GG's the fiery. I know, I know he's really good. He's been getting a lot better, and you know, we'll see what the future holds. Maybe we'll face off again in another tournament, and maybe I can take the win over that one. But definitely thanks for the restreaming. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy watching these back, so I'll definitely enjoy the reaction that both of you have for getting the uh, the drop and <laughs> seeing what chat says. Uh, thanks to Dave and, you know, Bangagon doing the cracking and Vincent Cat for rolling this wonderful seed and my never ending legacy in this tournament of always having a defeat giant objective. 
Well, and, you know, getting the drop. That's well, kind yeah. of more your legacy now. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. getting the drop is now my legacy on Restream. Yep, nope. All other memes are all their, you know, Charm Claw War, but nope, I am the drop. <laughs> Well, thanks again and uh, have a good night. Take care, Tibble. GG's again. GG's. Yeah, so Fox Gamer did a really, really nice job kind of setting up and just getting through this Z fight. Uh, Mr. JRPG is having a bit of a tough time of it, but, you know, like, the agility is tough and maybe not knowing to go down to battle speed too can be tough, but uh, Crystal Sword Cecil is, you know, sort of a. You know, as as panaceas go. <laughs> a bit of a cheat code, one might say. But uh, that's uh, that's a shake from Mr. JRPG. Looks like we are joined by Soapbox Gamer as well. Uh, GG's to you, Soap. Congratulations. Uh, getting a much-deserved first win of the tournament. Uh, playing like that, I am shocked you haven't gotten more, but heck of a run tonight. GG to you. GG's. Thank you so much. Oh, man. So, on a, uh, a scale of 0 to 10, uh, how happy were you, A, to get Cecil, and B, to get a Crystal Sword, followed by an Adamant Armor and Famer? Well, I'll crank that to about a 12 or 15. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'm still I reckon that's time. valid. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Man, that's sc that was that was a scary run. <laughs> we do need to take a second here because Crystal Sword Cecil just needs to dodge another Meteo, and I think this fight is over for Mr. JRPG. I believe. I mean, Adamant Armor Postal Sword Cecil is pretty good at getting up the rocks, apparently, because, like, all three of them missed. So, GG also to Mr. JRPG as well. Uh, coming in at a very strong uh, 154 and change here. We'll get an official time in a moment, but, you know. GG to you, Soapbox Gamer, and GG to Mr. JRPG as well. I appreciate that. GG to Mr. JRPG as well. He gave me a, he gave me a serious run for my money this evening. Oh, man. Yeah, y'all, uh, I mean, everybody played really well on Restream. Uh, you know, obviously, Cecil cranked up and uh, tuned to the nines certainly helps and uh, and covers a whole lot of what could possibly go wrong, but you still got to leverage that power accordingly. Um, when you were going through the seed, was were there any, you know, kind of rough spots, either pre or post Cecil, that you were kind of looking at things that you felt maybe you tripped up on or you know could have gone better just kind of what was your mindset as you progressed through the seed the second well i'll go with the trip up stuff first because you know what i gotta acknowledge flaws that crystal sword altar is going to be pretty funny to watch back because i apparently i can't time a cure three at all <laughs> <laughs> um uh let's see uh after pretty much once i once we pivot this Cecil, it's okay. What can I blow up as fast as humanly possible? And once we got through, once we got through the hook route, it was just all right. What can I do? I don't have warp, so I wanted to delay. I wanted to delay Dwarf Castle until I absolutely had to do it. I saw Goba is there, so it's all right. Let's sweep from the bottom up. So I hit Fame Arch. There's one boss I feel like I could grab to get a couple extra, you know, some extra experience. Maybe I'll spike an item. I kind of didn't, but. You know, at least the crystal store was sitting down there, so it was kind of an it was kind of a reward. And then it's just, all right, let's just do objectives as quickly as humanly possible. Where I really got scared was all of a sudden it comes down to, where's my rat tail? Where's my legend sword? Where's my harp? Give me one of those two, and it took me to my, it took me to the Mirasame altar to even get the harp. So it's like, okay, at this point, let's go through giant and see what happens, and hopefully I pick up the stuff I need in that whole sequence and luckily it panned out by Zot. Yeah, able to get that forge always fun with Sid as well. Uh being able to go bonk bonk with a big old hammer. Uh always a fun time. So you definitely got uh, got paid out for that uh, that forge. You had the pass as well. So let you kind of make up uh quite a bit of time at the end there. You uh 
you were ahead of Mr. JRPG most of the run, uh, but you closed it out in style uh, for sure, just uh, swinging for the fence and dealing immense amounts of damage. So it was a, a very good run overall. Again, just shocked that, that this is your first win with how well that seat. <laughs> it's, um, and I told, I told Poydrak this when I was on Restream Lat a couple weeks ago. It's just the way things have been going in this tournament, it's been, it's been a lot of floor exposure. And it's just a matter of trying to mitigate everything else that we've been trying to practice. So mm -hmm. it's nice to know that my practice is paying off at some point, <laughs> at least luckily in this run, because I wanted to start contributing wins. And getting this goose egg off the board is a huge weight off my back. But, uh, <laughs> um, the, but the largest thing is it's just, you know, trying to, keep your race clean min limit the mistakes and make sure that you know you don't leave an opening because realistically say i bang my head against one of those altars for another three to four minutes i'm behind again and for you to say that was ahead of most of this run i i decided the whole time i was going to play from behind i'm just like as soon as the race started i was like you're behind go 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 mm -hmm. so luckily it panned out this time well, uh, Demi, any questions for uh, for Soap? You almost beat Tybalt. Like, you were neck and neck <laughs> with Tybalt the entire run. Um, you got one more win in you this tournament, maybe? I, I'm going to cross my fingers and toes because all I want to do is help this team. And luckily, getting a goose egg off the board actually is that effort. So hopefully next week we can kind of put together the same type of effort and hopefully be on the right side of it. I believe in you for one soap. Uh, I know that you're you're not thrilled that your Knicks ended up two and four against the Heat, but for you to get to two and four in this tournament, I think would be a great goal. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to you to get there, and I, I will promise you that my Celtics are going to do the best to avenge your Knicks. <laughs> if I'm going to laugh so hard if it's if it's Celtics uh, Lakers, because I'm just going to be like, oh, it's a Heat, it's all over again. But I do appreciate <laughs> that, and. You know, I appreciate all of you guys, and I appreciate, you know, the entire Restream team since I'm a part of them, and I love you guys. Thank you so much for having me, as always. And for me, at least I feel, like, a little bit better about it this week. So I'm like, yeah, the beer tastes better this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for putting on such a great show, and you have yourself a great night. GG's again, and congrats on the win. GG's, Restream team, love you. Mr. Mr. JRPG, GG's, GG's, everybody. I'll see you guys soon. All right, and that was Soapbox Gamer, uh, our winner against Mr. JRPG this evening. And I do believe we will be joined shortly uh, by Mr. JRPG. Yeah, just as a note to everybody here, I'm sure we'll remind you afterwards, but after the interview with Mr. JRPG, we're probably going to skip off to another channel somewhere in this great wide world. Uh, do not spoil the drop. Seriously, do not spoil the drop. Don't spoil anything, but definitely don't spoil the drop. <laughs> And hello, Mr. JRPG, GG on your run today. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> so kind of a, a, a tale of two seeds, if you will. Um, basically pre-Cecil and post-Cecil. I've been kind of asking the same question of everybody. Uh, kind of what was your mindset before you see Cecil? And yeah. then kind of what was the mindset after? Because we saw you have to dip out of the hook route, go back to do ordeals, get them online for the Excal, et cetera. Yeah, I was just thinking to myself, it's like, okay, I'm just going to fit ordeals, but still have it in mind. It'll, it'll be fast anyways, you know, when my team gets stronger. So it's like, okay, let's see what happens. But then when I saw the Cecil, it's like, yeah, I got to do it. So I knew my like my beginning felt pretty sluggish and slow, so I just basically had to play, you know, in my mind, catch up. Yeah, definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, and and I think you correctly assessed that because uh, Soapbox Gamer did get a bit of a jump on you getting the, the Cecil earlier, having completed ordeals. Um, he also faded Eblin Castle. So he was able to just get the crystal sword immediately when he got underground through Fey March. So he definitely was ahead of you 
by a pretty substantial amount. Uh, you close the gap dramatically, though, on the back end of the seed, uh, nearly getting there, uh, you know, just a couple minutes behind. So, uh, you know, being probably north of 10 minutes behind getting underground and closing it to about five, six minutes by the end. Uh, the end of your race was was beautifully executed and beautifully done. Yeah, thank you very much. It's like, I feel like with a physical oriented party, the reason I did Eblin is because, you know, I'm, they're much more reliant on gear, whereas if I had a mage heavy party, it was like, I'd probably be fading Eblin, most likely. So that was the situation for me because it's like, okay, I have a cane. He could use probably like an Avenger or something like that. Or some, probably some little nicer toys, maybe get luck out of adamants, things of that sort. So that's why I would just feel like, okay, that's kind of part of my weaknesses where I just tend to be a little slow and thorough because you never know. Mm -hmm. That's always what's creeps on my mind. That's basically the double edged sword in my, one of my random weaknesses. On the other hand, you get like moments like how I just snagged the rap tail before I went to the giant. <laughs> it happens though. Um, you yeah. can always go back and, and complete it anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Um, I just figured, you know, I was gonna do giant straight to giant after the grind, but I thought to myself, it's like, oh yeah, Luke is nearby, and if I, if it's nothing, I just reset quickly, go. Yeah, now, I did want to ask you about uh, your team, Ridius Rebels, currently part of the uh, the ridiculous eleven way tie at four yeah. and two. Um, obviously, this is not the outcome you wanted uh, to start the week for the team. But uh, who else do we have to look forward to from Aridia's Rebels this week? Uh, do we know when the, the matches are happening so we can stay yeah. tuned to see how y'all progress? Well, Joe's match should be happening right now on Free Enterprise, I believe, and Lord Goober's is going to be tomorrow evening. So, uh -huh. and yeah, just, you know, speaking with that 11-way tie and such, it's like, yeah, <laughs> I definitely felt a lot of pressure today because I just feel like... We're in a very delicate situation, you know, because it's like, oh man, we actually probably have a potential shot for playoffs sort of, sort of mindset. So while I'm, I felt pretty fine with my performance overall, there was nothing in particular I super regretted or anything. I just feel bad for my team. It's like, I'm sorry, guys. I failed. I wouldn't call it a failure. <laughs> yeah, and no one, no one wins them all. Like you, you put yeah. on a good run and. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes someone's gonna put on a slightly better run. Nature's yeah. game. And I was just asking the chats, like, hey, where was Legend? Where was uh, Pass? It just happens to be the checks, hey, you know, I usually do, but I just didn't because I feel like, oh, I have other things in mind I could do, but Brando got a rando in that case. Mm -hmm. So I just ended up taking the long route, but hey, still like five to six minute finish gap. It's like, it's not bad, all things considered. It's up to. Yeah, definitely good performances uh, all around. Uh, not just in this match, but, you know, your other matches so far as well. So, uh, you know, for someone who I, I know doesn't play Free Enterprise all the time, like so many of the runners do in this tournament, you're still putting up a, a heck of a lot of great times in the... Yeah, thank you very much. It's like, if I'm going to lose, I don't want to lose badly. But, uh, Demi, do you have any uh, questions for Mr. JRPG? Why do you have the best name in the Free Enterprise community? <laughs> yeah, I like my JRPGs in anime. Good choice. Very good choice. Uh, will we be seeing you for our next event maybe later this year? Maybe, maybe. Uh, like I, guess I was motivated by a friend to just join this uh, tourney league. Uh, just to kind of experience it once or anything. It's like I've been having a lot of fun with it, so hey, who knows? But no promises. No promises is fair. I can accept that one. Yeah, we would definitely love to have you. But if not, uh, you know, that is your choice. And we uh, we absolutely will respect that. And we thank you definitely for being a part of this one. Uh, yeah, we're loving the, the team environment and everyone pitching in. Uh, mm -hmm. You might not feel like you got the result you wanted tonight, but you've still been an integral part of your team's success. So please yeah. don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, just more pressure on the other two. I think they can handle. Yeah, he's slightly. 
But uh, any last thoughts before we let you go enjoy the uh, the rest of your evening? And uh, I assume uh, paying some attention at least to uh, to your teammate Joe's uh, match against yeah. Pangonator. So thank you everyone for all that you do building the community, building the tournament and stuff. Uh, keep up the good work. And let's see how next week goes. Definitely. Well, thank you again so much for a great performance, Mr. JRPG, and you have a great night. Yeah, you too, everyone. Well, that was fun. I will say that's the first time I've been a part of a restream where there was an item and armor drop. I mean, I think I think this is for Enterprise history, actually. I think this is the first for a restream. Yay, us! <laughs> keeps happening to me. Things keep happening to me. The things, they won't stop happening. Same with Free Enterprise. Free Enterprise won't stop happening. Just because we are done here on RPG Limit Break. Again, huge thank you to RPG Limit Break for letting us host this uh, this edition of the Eblin Elixir League. Uh, we, we do have another Free Enterprise match. Uh, that is happening over on the Free Enterprise channel uh, between Judge Joe and Penguinator. Uh, Judge Joe being Mr. JRPG's teammate on Ridia's Rebels, uh, they are still vying for a playoff spot. Uh, and I believe uh, Penguinator part of a Big Chocobo Storage Wars, which is Soapbox Gamer teammate. So some more team action there. But thank you again to all of our runners, Fiery Blizzard, Tibalt, and Mr. JRPG, and Soapbox Gamer. Thank you, Xenocat, for the restream. Thank you, Bangagong and Angie Dave for the button pushing. And Demi, thank you so much for making this easy. I love doing comms with your friend. Thank you. That means means a ton. It's always a blast. But uh, again, toughest out of 2019 versus the toughest out of 2023 should be a fun race. So we'll see you over there in just a moment. Thanks a lot, everyone, and have a lovely night.